Hello, good evening everyone and welcome to episode 86 of Codebase Alpha and tonight we've got Morton with us and we're going to be looking at some F Sharp. Um, data structures in F Sharp is the, the topic and um, we're also going to be looking at property based testing but um, we'll kind of come to that uh, as, as we do. Let's drop over now into our pair programming um, area and um, Morton can tell us more about what, um, what he's got planned. Uh, Morton, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, yeah, I'm, I'm well. I'm keep, keeping safe. Hope you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like your background, by the way. I see, I'm seeing it now it's on the screen. Yes, <laughs> that's the um, that's a shader as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, of speaking course. of shaders, uh, there's this live code event coming up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I heard, I heard so in, in April. I think yeah, I'm going to try to make a shader for that event. That's, oh, right, good I'm, idea. I'm not, I'm not promising anything, but I'm, uh, think, uh, you know, I feel a little bit inspired to do something for it. Yeah, good idea. So I think it's the 9th of April, so Live Coders, um, Live Coders Conference. Uh, yeah. So roughly two weeks. I mean, uh, two weeks, something yeah. should be able to be done in the, that time. Yeah, absolutely. So, we, you know, we have a tradition when we're doing these things. Uh, I'm always on call when I do these things. <laughs> You're on call tonight, are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh well, never mind. Well, and, uh, cheers to you anyway. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and we have had a little bit of traffic spikes because of uh, you know the virus thing. Yeah. So we have a lot more traffic than usual. Anyway. Well, we'll understand if you have to um, if you have to rush off. So don't worry. Yeah, but but yeah, but uh, a good tip if you want to build a, an architecture that handles uh, streaming and uh, events, it's like to use auto scaling as much, much as possible because. Where we usually suffer is where our um, the architecture it doesn't scale automatically. Yeah. So uh, as much as possible, get that into the system, and then uh, you can probably sleep through these spikes. Uh, unfortunately, we have a few places where it doesn't upscale. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, so yeah. yeah, so yeah. To be honest, uh, I'm sure you've been watching, but I've been watching Brandon's stream and the way he talked about data structures, and I thought, yeah, that's a little bit interesting topic. And maybe talking about data structures uh, from a sort of functional data structures in F sharp. Yeah, I mean it, it, that that um, that series of streams. There's been two in the series now uh, with Guy Royce. Um, been very very good. I've enjoyed them. Yeah. So and they also done TDD. Uh, and then I thought that you know talk about testing and data structures is a good way to do it. I think. But I, 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 what I'm thinking to do is do more of another, which I think is a brilliant idea. And because I think it's brilliant, nobody else cares about it. <laughs> uh, but it's a called property-based testing. And when I first learned about that and realized what it was and used it, I felt, you know, use it for everything. I don't think you should use it for everything, but it really changed how I thought about testing. And I think that's a probably a good thing. I think it, it's very... Um... It's very applicable to to S sharp, isn't it? Because it's about testing kind of the mathematical properties. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what the, what properties means. Property based testing is that your code has certain properties mathematically or like something like that. This should always hold. Yeah. Like if you have an empty list and append something to the empty list, that list should not now be be of length one. Could yeah. be it's a property, and uh, never length two. So you actually implement these tests in this way. Uh, so, what do you think? I was thinking we could maybe start with implementing a simple single linked list in F Sharp. Yeah, it starts off simple and then maybe gets something a bit more interesting. Yeah, and and also because this is F Sharp, we keep the single link, link list immutable Absolutely. and avoid a lot of difficulties uh, that has to do with mutability. So I would, you know, it was some time since you did F Sharp, I guess. Yeah, it's well, been a while. Been a while since the last F sharp. Uh, so I did. Let's create a module, uh, and you call it my stack, or I don't know what you want to call it, uh, but something like that. You want a separate file, yeah? No, no, I would just do it in this file. Okay. In the main file. Uh, on top, uh, yeah, it probably works. God, naming things is hard. What do you, what, what would, you, what would you suggest? Just call it data structures. Uh, yeah, you know, my stack. You can always start and change the name later. 
Like that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, equal sign I would use in this case. Uh, yeah, and a new new line here. So uh, a list in F sharp. Uh, no, uh, not like that. No. That should, should be outside. So a list in F sharp uh, is actually, um, this is the same thing. We're going to define a list. Uh, like F sharp works because that's a single link list. And in F sharp, how would you do that? Uh, but it, this this indentation is is complaining. Yeah, I, know I know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. Okay. Yeah. So let me just start here. I can just write there. Do you want how much do you want to use? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So we can use say stack perhaps, or should we give it another name to not confuse ourselves with the built-in stack? Um. I call it the immutable stack, but that's, that's kind of long. Yeah. But that's kind of what it is. Well, let's call it that then, if that's what it is. Yeah. Right. And then we write the, the definition of it. So, so an immutable stack kind of has two states. Uh, so if you go to pipe sign here. Oops. I'm down, I'm down the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So a stack is either empty, right? That's the one case. Yeah. And the other case, let's we can just call it not empty. It's not empty stack. It's a stupid name. Yeah. But what does a not empty stack con consist of? So that uh, consists of some values of type T, doesn't it? Or type yes. Yeah. So. So it's going to continue. I'm going to have to. It's going to, going to contain this thing, yeah. but it should contain something more, right? It should contain a value, the head value, and the rest of the stack. Yes, that's true. So we can add mutable stack. Wonderful. So, so reviewing this thing, and we see that okay, well, an empty stack is either empty. Or not empty, and then it con con contains a head value and the rest of it. Yeah. And if you would look at the source code of F sharp, this is how F sharp defines uh, the list type. Okay. So this this is how because obviously when we when we're working with uh, things like lists, we have yeah. this um, the cons mm. operator which is x colon colon x's. So she basically yes. mirrors what you've written there, isn't it? Yeah, we could. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and F Shop uses some uh, things that are not really. Yeah, uh, they don't. I think in F Shop this is defined as this, but I'm not really sure. But it doesn't really work like th this. Right. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's just, um, and I think that is not considered really a good approach for things that are not that list. So, so two cases. So one way we can do it here, we start building a new module here with some nice to have functions because that's typically how people do it in F sharp. Uh, so I'm going to write probably, probably the most complicated function right now. Uh, and the reason this is complicated is because we have, uh, and this is the empty function because how F sharp works uh, now, uh, how F sharp works, in order to make the type inference correctly here, we have to sort of include the type here and write it in a very kind of special syntax. Right. So this is kind of the most complicated function we, we are writing here. That's uplifting because this is not that complicated. No. But this is a function that returns an empty list. Yeah. Uh, and then we can use this in our code here, if, I, if I'm allowed to write it. You here. carry on, yeah. Uh, my my stack or my I said the wrong thing so let's open open my stack like so and we can see what happens if we go into stack empty see it yeah hmm let's see what happens if we run this this is a, yeah.
it's my stack empty. Well, I don't see the, I see the debug console. Okay, so you don't see the um. Can we run it down here or is it down here? You have to look at the stream, I think. No, yeah. the terminal. Can we run it here? Perhaps? You can run, you can run it down I think it's here now. No. Uh, I, I will. I, I probably know what happens. So the important thing is it's it's on the stream. It, it came back it. came back with empty. Yeah. Yeah. And that's expected, right? So uh, now, then you said you have this cons function. So let's, you know, this is very simple. Well, let's define this cons function. I think the reason it's called cons is because it constructs, uh, you know, a list. But I'm not exactly sure of the history. No, it's, of it's, a, it's a weird name. I, 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 everyone just kind of trips out the word against it. Oh, it's just the cons operator, but it's not yeah, really yeah, clear yeah. What, what it's supposed to mean. It's, it's even weirder when you talk about. Uh, Hues because then they think then they call it a snock. Oh, do they? <laughs> which is a cons reversed. So yeah. it's like snock and cons, and it's like yeah, I don't think the name is very good. But let let's see let's see you try to define this cons function, right? So get start a little bit easier here. Okay, so um, defining a operator, I do. Uh, I think just a normal function. Just a function. Yeah. So just like let cons, yeah. Yep. And would it be, is it a cons of of type T? Is it? Are you no? Here we don't need to mention it. Okay, good. And then we have a head value and a tail value mm -hmm. as an input. Um. Now we want to construct this not empty, right? Yeah. Uh, this is um, something like that. That's not no empty. It's just not. And when you construct these things in F sharp, this is a. Uh, I don't know if you see my cursor. Yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, but this is a tuple value kind of conceptually. Oh, okay. So you have to construct it using a tuple syntax. Yeah. There you go. So what you can do now is in the example code printf down there, you can send instead of printing an empty stack, you can cons, uh, and we can also save ourselves a little bit of typing. So if I can borrow the cursor. Yeah, bit, you can. I'm just going to do this. So then we can save ourselves a little bit of. Yeah, I, I'm just writing a suggestion here. So let s equal empty. If that's okay, and then we can con now we can construct we can sort of you know cons values on top of this thing here. Of the off top of the empty. So let, let's just add a few numbers like uh, uh, one, one, two, three. Now, the the first value is the head value, so the tail is actually. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And what I would type here uh, to make because this constructs a value, but you don't have a. You, you can yeah type what you was what you were thinking. So I'm just going to look at. What say. We're looking like we got the right kind of thing here, but once it's saying. Uh... So it's ignoring the the result, isn't yeah. it? So because, because this is the immutable stack, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we're gonna make it. But you, you don't look at the value. Yeah. So if you assign this to a variable, yeah. Give that a run. So now we've got um, my stack not empty, and it contains a tuple of one comma empty. Yes. Excellent. So, so let me just uh, rewrite this code a little bit here. Uh, I can see what the yeah this thing. So we can actually use the um, the pipe operator here, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of the pipe. I was trying to kind of remember the um, the syntax of the pipe. Yeah, forward pipe. No, so that was wrong. So let's see what that prints. Uh, I think it prints what we expect, but. Uh, 
that's got um well it's it's a bunch of nested um tuples basically yes yeah this is kind of a pair of uh, values right yeah but what we see when we are commenting on it is that the list uh, we're adding things it's a stack it's not a queue yeah. because the first element is the three which is what we last added to it the last in first out yeah yeah so yeah exactly right so uh, let's uh, define a function then that helps us take out a value you know Okay. Because we're not constructing values. So we could use pattern matching for this. And this is uh, perhaps that's how we're going to do it. But let's just try to make a function that, you know, does that. We call it pop, shall we? Should call cons push, really, shouldn't we? I don't know exactly what to call this. Um, uh, but pop is okay. Yeah, we'll we'll call, call it that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you take in a, a list or a stack or a tail or I don't know what, what you want to call it. Yeah, that's good. So uh, what? So what should we do if the stack is empty? So we need to return empty back, don't we? Or we return none, right? Oh, a none. Okay, so we're going to go into summon none, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's good. So you have to write a match first. Yeah. Match stack with. Yep, get in there. So yeah, what should, be... we, what should we return here? I think what is preferable is you return the head value and the tail, because then you can conti continue iterating here, right? Yeah. But you have to pattern match out the head and the tail value. Okay. So here, I'm going to use my mouse cursor. Here we have to pattern match out head and tail, right? Yeah. Okay. We're going to do this, are we? No, uh, no, no, not, uh, uh, not. Okay, we could do it, but what I was thinking is this. So I'm just going to change it. Slightly. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay, right. Just get the the, um, the pair out. Okay. So we we get out a pair. Yeah. Yeah. So let's so let's see what this prints if you go. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, oh, jumped around. Uh, let. I don't know what to call it. Let t equal uh, s uh, pop. That's what we said, right? Yeah. Let's see what these things prints. Okay. So what that I'll make that bigger. So that's yeah. that's pulled out uh, a sum, and it's sum, and it's it's um it looks like the list again actually, the stack again. Yeah, so it, it, it's, a, it's actually a bit sort of redundant in some sense, but mm. this way we could use the option uh, type. But what we are, we pulled out uh, the three and we returned uh, the rest of the stack. Because so they're not empty and the, um, and the rest of the stack, yeah. So now it's possible for us to sort of, you know, loop over this data structure or do whatever we want and, uh, you know, using some and bi option bind and these kind of things, yeah. sort of, you know. With the data structures. And let's try what happens when we do this over an empty list because that should work as well, right? Yep. We're getting close now to writing our first test case. I'm mean, thinking of here. So this time we get a null, which is the non value when we print yeah, out it's, the. Uh... We, it's a little bit weird. F sharp optimizes. Um, under hood, it optimizes uh, none as null. Yeah, that really is... fooled me the first time I saw that. Yeah, 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 I get it. It's it's an optimization which probably is good, but it also trips you up. Mm. So shall we start writing a, a a property based test on this? Yes, let's do that. Yeah. So what is the property we want to test? Now this is difficult. So I'm going to answer my own question. <laughs> Always the best so, way. I would say that. 
that the property we want to test is regardless of the input, when we add a value to a list and then pop it, uh, the value should be the same as one we added. Yeah. So we add something on top of the stack and then we remove it. That should be the same value. Yes. Yeah. This is a very simple test, but it, it you know that property should always hold. If otherwise it's not it's a queue or something else. It's not yeah, a it's stack. Not a stack in the words, yeah. Yeah. So that is a stack property. So what I would do is I would uh, you know we just do it here. So on the same level as immutable stack, create a te something a module called a test. I would uppercase the tests. And in here, we will define a type type called, we can start properties. Uh, equals. And what I do is I type a new line here. And I type class. And the new line end. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to write what I was saying. Oh, Andy, so I didn't, I didn't hear that so bit. In F Sharp, this is a little bit redundant, but I think this, yeah, uh, I think some redundancy sometimes helps to understand what's going on. Okay. So what we do is we declare a static member, and here's a feature in F Sharp that you know some oh. people know about. But um, I love uh, this feature. Yeah. Uh, uh, my stack should behave. Like a stack. I don't know if this is a good name, but let's start with that. Well, it's good enough. This is probably a bad name. And, and a property based test is that it, it returns true if it's um, if it's good, and it returns false if it's bad. Right. So okay, how should this work then? Well, what I, it, it what we should do is kind of what I said. Given any value, let's say an integer. Like so, and given any immutable stack of integers, so I'm just saying I want to have give me something, and now we sh now we should be able to write a test case saying, well, if I if I update the um, new value like this. And what I do is I am um, gonna open immutable stack. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the value here on top of the list. Okay. Yep. Yeah, good. So on this stack, I get the value. I get the stack. I add the value on top of the stack. And then what I do is I then pop it. I don't know what to call it. Let's pop it. <laughs> and this pop like so. Yeah. And what do we ex and then we say this is just a naming convention I do. Uh, and we can I, I use ENA, you know, I like short names sometimes. So what I'm saying is what the, this is what I expect. Yeah, okay, expect I do. I am expect uh let's say I'm gonna change this order a little bit here. Uh, so so what I'm expecting after the, to be, the value to be is I'm expecting this to be some vs. Yeah, that's right. Because when I pop something after I edit it, it should be this. And then I compute the actual value by popping it. And then I verify that e equals a. Yeah. That should be it. So th what we're doing here is saying, give me an integer value, an, any integer value, and give me any list here. One, we create a new stack or new values by consing the vs on top of that thing. Yeah. And I was saying, well, what I'm expecting to see after I'm popping it is a value and vs. Yeah. And then we're popping it, and now we this should be equal to that. Yes. That's a that's a very simple property based test. Okay. Well, that's very clear. So let's. Uh, I'm going to help you set up a little bit of um, 
a bit of more things. So then we, I, this is what I do. I the run function, yeah. A run method, and then we go uh, open. And FS check, we haven't talked about that, but the FS check is a really good implementation of property based testing. So property based testing is not unique to F sharp. FS check actually, actually works in C sharp, but FS check works better in F sharp mm -hmm. because of what is called algebraic data types, which is basically records and union types. Uh, it's really a nice combination, but it works in C sharp as well. So what, what it's going to do for us, it's going to generate some test data for us, isn't it? Yes. And it's going to exactly try and find a character example to our property test. That's exactly what you're doing. Yeah. But that is what that is one of the things a uh, property based testing testing tool does is that it generates it it tries to create test data so it creates a counter proof yeah. to our program because that's what our our, the, our properties are. We train we're trying to sort of set up a counter proof. We're not proving anything. That's important to remember with testing. We never prove things. Because we can't, because there can always be a new input that disproves it. But we, what we're trying to do is saying, if you run through it, a lot of counterproofs and all the counterproofs fails, yeah, then maybe we are justified in believing our code works. Absolutely. So it's um it's a statistical tool, isn't it? So saying yeah. the likelihood is that that our property is working. But that is true from almost all testing. Absolutely, yes, because you can't you can't test. Especially with unit testing, where you tend to test, you tend to think have to think up test data to feed into unit tests, and um, where it falls down, of course, when you find a bug, that's when you add another test with another piece of um, test data in, which um, originally failed. Yeah. So, so, um, one thing that got me really excited about property based testing, we'll go into that but later, is that if you design them correctly. Because one of the problems sometimes when you when you when you start getting a lot of unit tests to test a lot of specific things is you get so many tests that test that are contrived yeah. in different ways. So it's hard to see what they actually are testing. What are the diff, what are the important things? You kind of lose. Uh, you can't see the forest for all the trees. But what I like about the property based test testing is that you actually are testing kind of black box properties, but then you get the confidence by generating test cases. Yeah. Another key feature, which I hope we will see, is that um, FS check finds a counterproof, but then tries to tries to find a minimal counterproof. That's right, yeah. So it kind of shrinks down, doesn't it, to find the, the simplest case that failed for you. Yes. And that's a pretty awesome functionality. Yeah. So it finds a counterproof, and that can be very hard to see what, what's the problem. But then it tries to sort of make it simpler. And then you see, ah, it was that uh, it's uh, the integer was minus two. Okay, that was the. Or maybe we were, maybe we were we were conning an empty stack on top of an empty stack or something like that. We yes. haven't considered that. Let's see now. Um, hmm. I was hoping for a little bit of help here. What if you type? Check out quick. We are check quick. Is that what you want and, to do quick? Yeah. Yeah, and what you type next is uh, uh, okay. This, sorry, uh, I couldn't. Ex I think this is how you type it. I'm not really sure. Uh, and what I'm planning to do now is that we run. We take this here. We need to give it an argument here. So let's see, does this thing run here? You need to give it an argument. It's saying it's um, it, the constructor wants uh, a one argument. What does this want? Yeah. Um, it doesn't say, it's just an overload to ah, taking one that's argument. All. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Okay, we have to do it slightly different, but that's okay. Config equals config. Dot quick, I think. So what we're doing here is we're setting up a quick config, which is a conf configuration. So what mm. I want to write right, here okay. is I want to check all properties here in the, this file called properties. I'm using a quick config that is kind of set up uh, sort of, you know, 
you know, we can tweak it, but it gives us some things to sort of test it with. I think it's about 100 test test cases it comes up with, isn't it? Hmm. So can we run this? Yeah. So if we look what it's done, it says properties.mystack should behave like a stack, which is the name of our member. And it's OK, passed 100 tests. Yes. Yes. Uh, neat. So let's uh, break this test a little bit to just show us that uh, what, and that it can do a few things. So how should we break it? Um, we could break the pop here, couldn't we? Yeah, we can break the pop. Uh, so let's say that when it's empty, it doesn't return empty. It returns something else. It returns maybe. Uh, uh, it returns. Uh, some one comma empty something like that this is we're going to get some warnings here but i think it should compile let's see actually it passed <laughs> i don't think i i didn't save i don't think that's the problem there yeah. right it's still passing it interestingly Ah, oh, okay, but I think I know what the problem is. Uh, is um, uh, we're not testing this thing here because we're getting anything in, but we we never in this empty case because we that's are true. We're always passing something in. Yeah. So let's just take. Uh, let's go back to that thing. And and uh, yeah, just take minus one here in head. Can place head by minus one. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's red now. Yeah. So it's saying all branches of pattern must must return values of the same type as the first branch. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Yeah. What I was thinking was kind of like this. Oh, head minus one. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So doesn't like it. Oh, this should be none. That's why. Sorry, it's my fault. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Let's run that. Okay, so this time we do get a failure as we expect. Uh, this time we're saying it says um, after one test zero shrinks. Um, it failed, and the and the, um, the the failing case was zero comma empty, which was a yeah. A stack a stack had zero comma empty, and it. And it, um, it so what you're saying is it it immediately fails uh, after the first test, uh, and the input that we it used to pass here yes, was zero empty, zero and an empty list. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's kind of expected. The other things you see here is uh, right. the gen thing. That is the state of the random number generator. So let's say you're starting to use this tool here in um, in your uh, build pipeline, and you, and then you go, wait, what second? Uh, what happens if I have randomized failures yes. in my in my runtime? That that's not unacceptable. Well, you can reproduce it using this uh, standard gen here. Yeah. Usually, can you reproduce it fine by seeing the input data and doing that? Because the, what the random number is used is to generate the input. So when you see these kind of logs, you can take this data and pass this to the function. Yeah. And uh, what I do, uh, sort of test out if I show you how to use this in input. Okay. Is I, I take this thing, thing here, so I can write something and go to the bottom of the screen. Because what we can do now is that we, uh, I can say tests. Uh, for some reason, I, uh, the intelligence yeah. is broken. But yeah, I'm not sure see. what's going on with your intelligence. Let me do it for you. Uh, uh, okay. Test properties, yeah. Yeah, and, and yes, test properties. Yeah. And the name of the method we did. Okay. You have to do a dot between because it's a method name. Right. 
And then you pass in the what we saw in the log. Now it's a zero. No, not, not like that, because this is uh, it's not like that. So zero and an empty list, not comma. The F sharp does Oh, of course, does, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to get, get back into this. Yeah, I get it. And then you print this result. So you pipe it to printfm. And I can help you. Or no, I can't. Yeah, I can. Just to print the value. Right. So we don't know what the value is. We just, just want to print it. So I saved it, I think. And I'm, so the idea here is that we, we saw that it was failing. And I'm just trying to, using what you saw in the logs, we just put that into yeah. the test. And it should fail now as well. And it does. It came back false. Yeah. So uh, and we and now we can fix the test case, right? We can uh, fix the code. We you know it's obviously wrong. Yeah. Uh, so remove this minus one. Run it again. Now we go true. Improve. Yeah. Then we get true. Now we go true. Yes. So then we, then then we have okay and. and when we work with property based testing, so sometimes I find that property based testing can help me identify interesting test cases. This was right. interesting, so it's the bug. And then you can sort of extract this the interesting test case and say, I want to continue testing this case. Uh, and then you make a manual, normal unit test of this thing here. So sometimes the property based testing comes up with uh, um, sort of things that you want to do normal unit testing for. Yeah, like corner cases or whatever, yeah. yeah. And it's actually quite good at finding these corner cases because uh, we don't see it right now, but it actually generates quite nasty data. Oh, right, okay. Uh, so, and we can we can have a little bit look at that. So if you remove this, uh, because this is not a very interesting case, if you remove uh, line 44, and remove, so let's look at what kind of data it generates. Okay. And a very simple way of doing that, uh, or at least I think it's simple. It's just you go into the test method. No, not there. Or uh, uh, that's not at least not what I was thinking. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so go into this test method. Yeah. And you just print the input here. Um, print v and vs, yeah. Yes, exactly right. And then we run it again and see what happens. This should be interesting. Okay. Let's have a yeah, look. I'm a little bit curious as well. See, I'm watching your screen. I'm watching the stream now. Yeah, so there's all the data that check in properties. Yeah. So it's not, uh, we don't have that many test cases, but this is the data we received as input. So we received, first we received zero empty, zero empty, then one empty, and then uh, zero and not empty. And the, empty, the way yeah. it works, it gets, more, it gets more and more complex. It generates, uh, it, it tries to sort of generate more and more complex input data. But what's pretty cool here is that it just looked at the type of, yeah. your, of your list, right, of the stack, and it generates stack here. And that's quite cool because if you construct your data types in such a way that there are no invalid states, right? Yes. Then, then it will just create whatever for you. And you know, and we can use this to generate tree structures and all kind of weird stuff going right. on. Right. Let's uh, try to change the int to a string and we see what kind of strings it will generate because I think that's interesting as well. And you need to change it in um, the stack as well. So the, the VS is an immutable stack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, didn't see your mouse cursor. Maybe I should double click your. 
Yeah, if you follow me, yeah, it should be okay. Yeah, that's probably good. Uh -huh. Can I double click it? Hmm, it disappeared. Oh well. So you run it and see what happens. There we go. So it's got. Um... Yeah, you see, these strings are nasty. Yeah, look at these. It's got all these weird printing, non-printing characters or weird characters in there. Yeah, and the embedded noodles, yeah. the noodle strings as well, yeah. right? Yeah. That is something we don't always test with, but you can receive a null, null value. That's there. And it is possible, uh, we probably come to that later when I'm writing more advanced, but you can actually say to, uh, you can actually tell uh, FHEC to not generate null values or like discard if things are doesn't really work with you. Right. You can discard these things. Ah, that is not a valid thing. Uh, we can actually generate 1,000 tests instead to see what we get then. Let's do that, yeah. So if you go to line 33, then we're going to uh, use the quick one. Okay. Yeah. But then you go these curly brackets around it. Uh, yeah, not like that. I'm going to show you. Okay. So, okay, so you like around that, okay. Yes. And this, and then we say that we take the, we base it on this one, and then we uh, replace it, but we say we want max test 1000, I think. Okay, so this is um, this is a record type you're updating. Yeah, okay. and we are saying we just take quick as it is, but replace number of tests with 1000 tests instead. And then we can see what happens That's if it works. Test, there we go. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't have IntelliSense. So I, have to go. <laughs> I, I, I I'm not quite sure why you don't have it because it's you're supposed uh, to get IntelliSense on I live think share. I'm using VS Code and you're using. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was working in the beginning, yeah. but now it's not. I did think it was working. Yeah. Then we got a thousand tests. Yes, and uh, it's getting really kind of. Messy, complex right? messy, looking, messy. looking data, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, and because of what it also does is like it, it increases the complexity more and more and more as uh, as long. And we can control that as well. But this is, you know, it, this is a start. That's yeah, really good. Yeah. So for each and every one of these input, what we're saying is that this basic property should always hold. I mean, it's not very complicated property, but it's it's you know it's a property that should always hold. Yes. Uh, so let's shall we implement some other simple ones? Yeah, let's do some more. Yeah. Let's see now. Have a look. Oops. Let's go ahead. So let's you know uh, do a simple that. Uh, Let's implement the length property. Okay. And if we, check, we basically do the same thing, but we check that after we add things to it, the length should be n plus one. So if you have, if you take the length of the list and then add something to the list, the length should now be one step longer, right? Yeah. So we need a length function, don't we? Yeah. So how are we going to define a length function here? Hmm. Oh, you get the, you have an input argument that is stack, right? And then you have to recurse over this thing here. And the way we recurse in F sharp is usually could be using a local function. Okay. Do you want to do you want to carry on? You, you, I... you do it, yeah. You drive a bit. Yeah, I can do it. No problem. So. Uh, and we can call this something like that. So I can say, let's recurse sort of a loop. And then we have the length here that I'm going to accumulate. Yep. And then we have the stack. OK. And then we go match stack with. Which is where you kind of want to do it. You want a, um, you want a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, God, I can't 
can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's like a fold or something like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, but yeah, I, I actually, yes, I, I, th I agree. And I, uh, I'm kind of hoping we get to implement a fold, and then we, we might re-implement length. Yes, using that. But let's let's start with uh, let's start with the simplest uh, way then. Okay. <laughs> so, if recurs, if it's empty, then the result is the length yes. we have computed. And I'm I'm taking effort here to sort of make sure that uh, we are. Uh, that we are making sure that this become a tail recursion because then this become a, just a loop. It's, it doesn't become a recursive function actually if I write it in this. Way. Okay. You could write it in a different way that is not tail recursive, but writing it this way ensures it becomes a loop and that's more effective. And so what happens now if it's not empty? What we do then is we just call uh, the recurse function and take length plus one, and then on, st on yes. stack tail. Yeah. And then I say recurse zero stack. That should be it, I think. So let's go through this. So length takes a stack and returns. Uh, oh, uh, that's B. That's weird. Oh, well, that not doesn't matter. I was thinking the time. Uh, oh, well, let's see what happens. And what we do is we, we d define a recursive function. Do you have to use the rec keyword for that in F sharp to, when you want to do recursion? And then we match the stack with uh, an empty list. And then we just return the length. We can do this. So it, may, it might be slightly more readable. And if it's not empty, we just say, OK, let's g grab the tail value. We don't yep. need the head value. And just take. Recursive length plus one and a tail. Does that does this make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It's just it's not very happy, so it's giving us a red squiggly under um between the the pipe and empty. For ah, some but reason. I think this is the I'm using a Mac keyboard. You see, oh, that's, right. uh, there that's there very you go. That's better. Extremely irritating habit of putting in non-printable spaces. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so let's, let's have a property then. Yeah, let's try to make a property. So I, I will just start the same thing here, right? Uh, most, like copy paste this property here. Yeah. And uh, now it's the hard part. Uh, what is the name of this property? What is should we? Uh, this this is difficult yeah. naming, especially since you can type anything, right? Even harder. Uh, okay, but uh, okay, let's say uh, length of the cons is n plus one, something like that. Here we go. There we go. That's the name. Okay. Uh, I think we should also remove this. Uh... Yeah, no, no, it's, it's right. So what you do now is that we, you should compute the length before cons and then compute the length after. So yeah, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, even better. No, uh, no, uh, uh, and that's wrong. It's NVS, the, right? NVS, yeah, yeah. And then you remove line 39 40. I think that they are just there, and and then 
before plus one should be equal to after, right? Yeah. Ah, I, I would type a parenthesis here because I'm uncertain about the precedence. Okay, we'll, we'll give it some, give it a clue, give it a hint. Yeah. So, okay, so what do we do here, right? We, we, we ask for, give us any list of any length, and, and then we do a length of that thing, and then we cons that list with a value, and then we do a length again, and now the new length should be that thing plus one. Yep. And what we'll do while we're at it is we'll because yeah, so what we'll say is we'll have another one. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Here you don't need the value v in this case. Yeah. I'm very happy about this test case. Extremely satisfied. Now pop returns. What, what does pop return? Yeah, it returns either empty. No, it returns none. None or some, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, um, so this is going to be. Can we? We've got is some. What is none? Um, uh, I'm, I can write it. Go on, then you can help me out on this one. Why well, I'm thinking it here, yeah. but you might need to help me with the. Um, oh, okay. We can we can unwrap it. Yeah, okay. So the first is the the first value is the um, is the popped value, and the second value is the new new list, the new stack. Yes. What you have to there? Oh, okay, um, right. And we can actually do this way as well, right? Option dot map length. Option. There's something called default value, or something like that. Uh, default value. Yeah, it goes zero. And this is after. So what the heck did I write here, right? Okay, uh, this is pretty what, cool. But I think this was your intention, right? To yes. say after minus one, that's it, yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying here is take the length and then we pop it, but because this is an option, and uh, it's an option of two values. The head and the tail. Yeah. So we use map to extract the tail. And then what we have now is an option of a, a immutable stack. And then we use length to extract that in, into an option int, if this works, right? Yeah. And then we say, okay, but if it's nothing of that, we return zero. Zero, yeah. Okay. Let's give it a go anyway. Okay, so we get a failure on that one. So, uh, yeah, we got. so I want to see. I want to see what's happening here. I'm very, I'm, very, I'm curious about this. So it's our um, the the decrease. So falsifiable after one test, one shrink. It's yeah. saying that um, if it started off with not empty, yeah, the empty string and empty. Yeah. So it shrunk that down to just empty. So, so it's so, failing so, on the empty so, list, isn't it? Empty. Yeah. So stack. the first input actually was that. It created a list that was uh, not empty, and that didn't work at all. So it is, yeah, this test is not. But I think uh, uh, I think if you think about this here, uh, the empty test case doesn't really work. 
I suspect. Uh, so here I think what we should do is, uh, this is what I do sometimes when I do this, and it's a bit hard to understand what's going on. Okay. I'm 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 print I'm printing uh, I'm printing the values. So in this test here, we can debug it, but uh, I never get debug. Oh, you, uh, yeah, you run Visual Studio, so maybe the debugger works for you. You can put the breakpoint here, and we can try to debug it, but I can't really see it on screen. Yeah, don't worry, just put do the print, do what you, what you wanted to do. Yeah, so this is what I do sometimes. The thing is, I actually, and now people might not like me, but <laughs> I I don't use debugger that much anymore. Because the way I'm thinking about it, and that's it, this is just me thinking about it, but in my line of work, when things fail, I never have the debugger. Uh, that is not available to me when things fail in production. So in order to get better at debugging uh, realistically, for me, in my line of work, I don't use the debugger at often. Right. The debugger is not is not uh, it's not there for me when I need it. So, uh, but so what I'm doing here is just I'm, okay. Maybe this is not aware, but this is just to get in. I I try to be in the habit of debugging using uh, metrics or logs. So let's see if the, what happens. So I just printed the different values. Print the values out, yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm waiting for the on for for the stream here to pop up. Okay. So it's when it's when the it was when it's zero, when it's zero before. If it's empty, it's it's remains zero. It's not minus. It's not the original length minus one. No, uh, this is a very obvious bug. <laughs> yes, obviously. Yeah, when you see it. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, very obvious. Uh, when you, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep them because you never know if you need them again. But uh, let's run it again. Yeah, I outsmarted myself by changing the sign. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. There we go. So now it's yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's on the empty list. It's failing. Yeah. Yeah. After two tests, yeah. but the first test actually succeeded then. The first the one did, yeah. So what is the problem here? Uh, the problem is that, of course, that uh, of course, if the list is empty, we default to uh, zero. But yeah. that is not the length of uh, of an empty um, uh, sort of. If you if you are popping an empty list, yeah, nothing, nothing got popped did it. Didn't change. Yeah. It's still an M, you know, it, it doesn't go pop. So we end up in this this case here. So I guess we can fix the test case by saying minus one instead of zero in the, the default value. Yep, yeah, good to hear. Oops. Because then the additions will add up. So I think I might be wrong. Let's give it a go, see what happens. Very possible. There you go. Fast. Stream here. Yeah. So we have actually 1,000 tests here on different things, and we saw we had some issues, and we were able to sort of work. I mean, it was very simple, but. Well, see, at least it, at least it did fail. It would be really pretty um, artificial if everything passed, and we have to keep that changing the code in order yeah. to make it fail. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a good failure. Yeah, it was good. So uh, you you said. Uh, you said we wanted a fold function. Fold, yeah. Let's try to implement that thing. Now we will get into now. Then I will show you a trick to cheat here. Oh, so I like I like, I like tricks that let me cheat. Yeah. So this is a this is cheating, but it's a good cheat. So let's define the fold function, and that it has it will follow the same structure as the length function. Because the length function is uh, is basically so. So what is the thing? So let's we want our we want our fold function to look like a normal fold. So what as an example, what you can do, yeah, let's do it like that, and then just take a single argument, whatever. 
sum them up okay. equals. And then I, then I will type array dot fold and then see what signature that thing has. Okay, so the the the, the signature of that is it um okay. It says it takes a state and a type and returns a state. So it, is that say a folder, a function, presumably. Yes. A function which takes a state and a value of type T and returns yes. uh, a state. Um and, and a this, state and, and and an array. Yes. And then it returns a state. Yes. So, so when we say argument. state, we could say like an accumulator, couldn't we? Yeah, that can be anything, right? Yeah. That depends on the, how you are folding. So folding is is a way to sort of iterate over uh, a listens, compute a new value. Yes. And that's how our our that's how it w should work for us as well, right? Yep. So uh, so we should have the same signature. We should have a folder, and we should have a state, and we should have an input stack. That is the signature of our method. I like that. Yeah. And now we will implement this. And I think you can copy paste the recurse loop more or less, and then we tweak it to match it here. Yeah. So we're not going to compute a length, but we're going to compute a new state. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. If you want to call it state uh, or accumulator or whatever instead of length. Yeah. And when we hit the end of the stack, we just return the accumulated value. Otherwise, we extract the head because we need the head value here. Yeah. We didn't need it before. And then we, instead of doing plus one, we, we invoke the folder function with the state, accumulated state, and the head value. And then, yes, it looks right. And then we recurse, but instead of passing in zero, we pass in the accumulator and the stack. So it has the, almost the same structure, right? But this is much more generic. So now we can actually re-implement if the, it does this compile. I don't know. No, it's Maybe. not compile at the moment because it's got um, it's saying that ACK is undefined. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. You put in the state there. Yeah, state. I thought fault. it was state. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my, my my fault. Yeah. But you, you, the point is here, right? Instead of uh, we are folding using length, but then we have a we have this plus one function. Yeah, so that's the function is is the plus one, yeah. Yeah. So what we can do now is we can take the length function and replace it uh, with uh, uh, with a fold. And then you put in uh, here, what you put in here is... Uh... Robert Tables is raiding with a party of 24. Yeah, Welcome that. raiders. Good to see everybody. Have some raid hype. Oh. <laughs> 24, that's, uh, that means that there's more than just... <laughs> that's How many percent of increases that? Oh, uh, about about uh, 2,400 uh, percent. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, well, Surly Dev, welcome to you. Robert Tables, thank you very much for the raid. Up Doc, thank you for the follow. Have some hype. Thank you so much. Happy Monday to you, Robert Tables. Hope you're keeping safe and all your viewers are also keeping safe. Beach casts as well. My God, we got everyone here. Look at all those emotes flying around. So we're doing some F-sharp, so we're doing some data structures in F-sharp at the moment, and we're um, doing property-based testing using FS-check. So um, we've just um, been working on um, uh, some basic properties of a, a data structure we've created, which we, we've called an immutable stack. Um, so we're now we're just kind of building some properties and some functions uh, for this, um, this immutable stack data structure which we've created. 
and we just defined a fold uh, function and we're now just we're redefining our length uh, function we had in terms of fold so um our folder here is going to be to to add one isn't it yeah to the state yeah so i don't know how we exactly we're going to define that we're going to find that as a lambda i, I often th think it helps just to define a folder function explicitly instead of doing it in line okay you, so i just break uh, let that folder and if you remember the the signature here of the folder takes a state a value v and returns a state yes so plus one yeah and then we pass the folder here and the stack cool so instead of doing this iteration here we just passing in a function that just increases the state by one all the time and we start from zero and then we return the stack. Yeah. So we can test that so, now. So then our property based testing should hold. Yeah, let's make sure it does before we go any further. If you've done it correctly, it's entirely po possible it doesn't. But it does. Good. There we so go. Let, let's see if you can break this test here because one of the things, what happens if uh, we change zero to one here? Well, that should ruin it. Yeah. But does it? What, how many tests does it ruin? Ah uh, well, I think it should test at least. It should fail. It should two two tests should fail this time. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking too. Let's see what happens. Oh, interestingly, the increase well actually did did pass, which is interesting. So it yeah, fails on the empty the empty list again, the empty stat again. Yes, because the thing about the increase is that it only tests that the it asks what is the length, and then the length is n, and then we say what, and then we compute the length. So it, it checks that n is n plus one, yeah. but it doesn't check the root case. Like if you're doing inductive proving, yeah. it checks that it uh, if if the length is n, the next length is n plus one, but it doesn't check the root thing. Yeah. But because of how we've written the uh, the when we're popping it. It actually it doesn't match because then we are hitting the root case yeah. um, in a more convoluted way. So yeah, that's good. that's good. We capture that and yeah, it failed on the empty list as expected. As expected, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, so let's see now. What is the next step? You think um, should we go much further in this area, or should we? Uh, should we write more tests? Uh, how? What do you think? Um, do you think we should? Um, we should. We got. A, you know, this is a fairly simple and. No, I, I, want, I want to show you a cheat trick here. Oh, go on then. Yeah. Uh, which is. Uh, Link slumps. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you again. Sorry, Morton. No, no, it's no problem. Uh, uh, let's see. How should we do this? Yeah, I think what we want to do now is we want to. Um, let, let's let's define the map function. Map, okay, Just, yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to show our cheat stuff here to Go save time. You 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 give all away. Sorry. If you want to, did you want to write something or shall I write something? Uh, uh, let's start like with the, the fold function, but let's implement map okay. uh, using fold. Okay. And then what is the signature of a map function? So map's going to have a function. Yeah, which is the mapper function. Uh, and a and a, um, a collection. Yeah, a stack. Yes. And we want to reduce our reduce our code, right? So yeah. we want to say uh, let folder uh, equal. Uh, no, no, folder is folder. kind of. And that takes a state and a value, right? As an input. Yeah. The equal sign is, should be after. There we go. So what 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 do we want to accumulate here? Well, what we want to do is we are, we want to accumulate a new stack. Yes. But when we accumulate a new stack, we are going to map the value function value through that mapper function. So the new state is actually, uh, the state here is a, is a list. So I, I, I can write this. Yeah, you carry on. 
So the state, and then we go cons mapper val. So the thing here is that okay, yeah. state is a list, and we we get the, we get a value here here that we should map, and then we run this value through the mapper function that is part of this thing here, and then we add it to the list. Yeah. And then we go folder of fold folder empty stack stack. Okay. I think this should be uh, you know I don't have intelligence I don't know if this compiled but in in theory this should be correct. Okay, so we've got uh, ah val is uh, is a special the keyword. keyword okay value. Yeah, that's what I see now. Yeah. That's why I always use single letter key. Yeah, so. you can't go wrong then, can you? Except if we run yeah, yeah, yeah. out of letters. That's it. We've got prime and double prime after you've run out of letters. So, so that is our mapper map function. So I think we should write a unit test for this. We'll write a, well, a property-based property test. test, yeah. So let's write that. And now I'm going to show a cheating trick here. Uh, and that is to use an oracle function. Oh, that sounds because interesting. Sometimes finding the properties can be difficult. Sometimes it's very simple, but sometimes it can be very difficult. But then you can say, let's reuse the fact that there exists an array.map that the F sharp developers have put a lot of test, test effort in. Yeah. And as long as our uh, as long as our stack behaves the same way, we are good. Yeah. Uh, uh, but now I realize we miss, we miss a few functions here, but I think about it. Sorry about that. Uh, but, but we can start writing it uh, like, we, um, like we were thinking about it. Uh, so what do you reckon then? What we're going to call it, call a test. <laughs> uh, the hardest bit of all is writing the name of the test. Yeah, so... Um, uh, uh, my stack, my stack map should behave as array map. Or let's say say list map. It's easier to do that. Okay. So what we're gonna what we're gonna we're taking in um our a stack. Okay, then what else do we need to take in? Is this um, just a stack? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the the so what we want to do, like we want, so what we can do here, I'm gonna write something. You carry on. Yeah, I think I did a mistake here. Yeah, yeah it's monster, so I get confused. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> yeah. So I. Uh, so expect the value is zero. I don't know what to put here, so I just put in zero. Okay. But what we want to do here is that we want to take this thing and run this through map and take just this value plus one. Okay. And then we have a new immutable stack. And then we want to compare E equals to A and see that A is equal to Oracle. And then we basically um if we had a way uh, to do it like this, um, to list, that, let's say we implement a function called, um, oh, yeah, uh, from list. So we we have we have a mutable stack as input, mm -hmm. and then we say let's convert. Uh, no 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 no, what am I thinking here? Sorry, I have to think no, a bit. Don't worry. This, this is where you find out that thinking and, and streaming is difficult. Okay, I'm, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change this a little bit here. Uh, so I'm just going to say, give me a normal F# -shop list. Okay. Do you want a list of strings there or a list of ints? And then we we say we have because we want to compare that this thing works, and then we say from list yeah, to list so we don't have these functions yet but we can create them yeah so what the, the idea here is that we 
in order to use, reuse uh, in order to reuse these um, functions as sort of oracles, we are we take a list as an input and a list. This is our expected value. No, oh, and then we do the same thing here. List dot map. We run the same conceptual operation on list dot map. The same map because we want to make sure that our mapping function works the same way as list mapping function conceptually, even though it's different data structure. And in order to make, but in order to make the data type maps, we have a we create a new function that takes a list and make it into our immutable stack. Do the mapping operation, and then then we make the immutable stack back to a list, and then it has the same data type. And now the result should be equal. Right. So it's, so it's not happy about the um, the code at the moment. No, we, we, no, we don't have these functions. Okay. So this is the first one is. Uh... Yeah. What is the what is the first one is complaining about because I see it on stream. Yeah, it said. says a uh, definition may be used only used as uh, in a type with a primary constructor. Uh, 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 I'm not quite sure what that means. The value or constructor vs is not defined. Uh, I think it's because we're missing an equal sign here, right? Oh, okay, right. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's good. But now we need to define the from list and the to list. So we're going to change this this type to a, to a list of int here. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that that, that we need to do. Yeah. So uh, the to list is quite simple. Okay. At least I think so. So, uh, because here we can use the fold functions uh, again, right? Fold into a list. Okay, we could use, yes. we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a very simple function. So you define a fold function, and you take the state and value, and then you just return. Uh, uh, Value cons state, and this time we use the norm. We want to produce a list, so yeah, that's extra. Yeah, and then you return the fold function or the fold, um, yeah, initial value would be. Oh, no, no, it's the empty list. Like yeah. empty list, yeah. Oh yes, of course it is. Yes. And then you do the uh, from a uh, from list. So I, you... I find I find F sharp quite an enjoyable thing to do, and it's a very much like um, I don't know, it's, it's like it's like you're experimenting, isn't it? You you you. You kind of write something, mm. and that kind of says, "Okay, now now I need to write other functions that do that thing." So you just write you know, to list from list. Yeah, it tells me what I'm going to do. Now I've got to go and do those things. It's, so you're building things up. I think we we talked about it before. We build things up in in these kind of very small units, and it's quite an enjoyable concept. So yeah. from list. So I'm going to take another list. And here, and here we take a list as input. So you type list or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. L. And then you de define the folder function. And this is kind of the same thing, really. Mm. But now we're going to construct um, uh, now we're going to construct um, stack. Yes. So we're going to we're going to uh, we want to pull it apart, don't we? Pull the list apart and. No, no, uh, no. You want to instead of you want to instead of using the v, you use our const function. Oh, okay, yeah. No, no, that was right. Yeah, v is correct. Yeah, I was just uh, saying the wrong thing. So you use cons oh. SV. So this comes because list and stack, our stack is identical. As we mentioned, for people that wasn't in the beginning of stream, yeah. the list and the stack, we are building a stack that is identical to how list works in F sharp. And then you go list.fold, 
Because now we have to use the list.fold function. Oh, because we don't yeah. the list. And I say folder empty. No, uh, and uh, now it's a little bit tricky tri tri as well, but the, we are, you use empty, empty yeah. stack because we are folding our stack. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, it's a little bit sort of, you know, difficult to keep track of all these things here, but that's basically what to do. Okay. Let's say, it's complaining about folder here. So it says the types A and immutable stack of A cannot be unified. Uh, let's see now. Type of A and okay. Let's see if I can see the. I can sometimes see the things here. From this list to list. It's irritating that I can't see. And the same thing you see. So. Okay, so what it's saying is, um, so it, folder is taking uh, type B and an immutable stack of B and returning an immutable stack of B. Mm. And it says type mismatch, expecting A, A to immutable stack of A goes to A, but given. Uh, no, no, we flipped the arguments. Oh, okay, that's it, yes. <laughs> It's easy to make that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Why it's, uh, <laughs> that's why I think people often recommend yeah, it. Pipe it in properly, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's 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 much uh, much clearer, isn't it? How does our test case work here now? Well. Does it even compile? It should compile, I think. Yeah. It does compile. Let's give it, it a run. So it um, so it failed after six tests, and it shrunk that down to a uh, a list of uh, zero and one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it 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 runs six tests, and it okay. But um, yes, and I think I know why. And that is something we haven't thought about here. So the thing here is um, when we're ac accumulating our lists. So if you if you if you if you look at, for instance, the to list function. Yeah. This is how stack works, right? When we when we are accumulating a list. This, uh, when we, we accumulate the list in this way, the stack ends up in the reverse order. It does. And that is, I think, the reason we're having this problem. Yeah. Because what happens is that we are generating a, a list and then we are, uh, and then we are uh, flipping the order again. So we, we are flipping the order back and forth and then we end up. And that's the reason it didn't fail on the empty list. Yeah. It failed on a, a, a list that have two elements because then it ended up in a di different order. Yeah. Hello, Stuart Penner. So, Stuart Penner, welcome. So we, we need to start doing that. We need to sort of flip the orders here correctly. And one one way, one place we need to do it is in the to list and the from list function. Because uh, in the to list function, we are accumulate, we we're reading value in one order, but end result here is in the wrong order. But it's very easy to fix yeah. here. We just do list reverse. In the from list, yeah. No, I, I'm going to show you here. Okay. List rev. Now oh, okay, they, right, yeah. Yeah. But what we are missing is a reverse function for our lists. So let's implement that. Okay. But I think that actually, since we are since we are just continuously reversing list by mistake, we just implement uh, it using fold again. So I would just take yeah, SV and then we go uh, S pipe cons 
Cons V. And then we fold over this thing here. So, so we are we are taking a list and we're creating a new list using this folder function. But because of the properties of as to how stack works, right? It will end up in reverse order. Yeah. And now we can fix our from list function. But before we fix the from list, let's 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 let's, let's not fix it. So let's implement a property base, a property test. The reverse, yeah. How do you test from list and to list? Well, one way to test it is that saying if we go from list and then to list on what the result we get, the result should be identical. Yeah. So let's let's do that. Let's implement that test. So if you go down there, yeah, exactly right. We we want to test that uh, from list to list is identity function. Yeah, I'm not uh, good idea there, Sherlock. Uh, but I'm not sure it includes online uh, because uh, online meetings. And you take a, a list as an input, a normal list, or as, uh, immutable works also. So silly, silly of saying, oh my, there are 12 people here. We need to spread out, you guys. Yeah. So we're all we're all a lot more than two meters apart, I suggest. So I think um, Morton and I are several hundred miles apart. So yeah. we should be okay. And the expected value here is the input argument. So that's how I do it. And then we compute the actual value. And then what we do is we take the VS value and pipe it to uh, to list, which create a list. And then we pipe it back using from list. And then since this should be an identity operation, E should then be equal to A. Expected yeah. should then be equal to the action. Yeah. And the, because we haven't really implemented it properly, this shouldn't work, right? But let's see what happens. Let's see. So it failed after 40 tests. Interesting. Mm. So A not empty, and then the empty string and empty. Yeah, but it it falls down to that it it tries with a list that contains two values. Yeah, which right? is what we said before, isn't it? Yeah, and that that mod, that was uh, created a problem. So let's let's fix uh, the function by uh, adding the reverse because then it should work right. So if you run this again, what happens? Okay, so our um, to list from list passes okay now, but it, our our map is now yes. failing. Yes, oh. and and the reason for that is that our map produces a reverse list, so we have to reverse, reverse the end again, result. Yeah. That's exactly as, as we expected, isn't it? So uh, yeah. map, and then we need to just pass that result to reverse. And the reverse is defined below, so it has to be moved up. Yeah. Rev gone. So this is a cheating trick, right? To make sure that. Um, uh, sort of make sure let us reuse let's because let's say you're implementing your own data structure so you're implementing something that should behave as something else mm. you can then use the other behavior as an oracle for your thing and I, I sometimes use this when I've been saying I need to implement a binary heap which is difficult to get right because it's a uh, fickling with array indexes but then I I create an Oracle implementation using a sorted uh, array, which has worse performance characteristics uh, properties, 
but it behaves like I want it to behave. Yeah. But it's much easier to make the implementation correct in forms of in, in terms of uh, look at that, right? Yeah, it's passed. Fish Jones, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. So we have it. So just to finish that thing up. So because then I make an implementation that is simpler, simpler to make sure it works, but I have another that is, has better performance. But then I make sure that they always are in agreement on the result. Yeah. So, so Surly Dev, so Surly Dev, you if you um. Have you been watching Boris? Is he given a, a, a speech to the nation? Because I was expecting to um, him to say that uh, he's going to introduce, you know, more severe kind of legislation to lock down the country. So it's lockdown, is it? Yeah. Recorded yeah. statement. Okay, well, I'll be able to watch it, but after the stream. In my uh, in my country, where I come from, there was also a speech yesterday, very dramatic. Because that never happens. It's in uh, in the, where I'm from. It's very unusual that the prime minister sort of asks for time on television to make an announcement. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that never happens. So this was unique. Uh, but it was a quite meek. It wasn't really very shocking. But just the thing that it happened, you know. Yeah, that, that was enough, was it? People took yeah. notice. Yeah, that's the problem. Politicians appear, appear on the TV here all the time, so uh, I guess yeah, it's not so. They, they the impact. Be, but in that manner, like yeah, uh, yeah, that's very different. Groups of two, yeah, that's uh, when they start forbidding groups of one, I'm I'm in problems. <laughs> no more than groups of two, yeah. And mm. yeah, so does this make sense to you? Uh, or anyone else, by the way. It makes sense to me. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's any comments from from chat. I mean, I think we, we've kind of we we had, the raid was 24. We're now down to six hard, hardy souls. So I guess uh, F sharp isn't to everybody's uh, taste. But I find it, I, I just find it quite compelling. But so, this, but the thing here, which I like about proper based testing, and uh, hopefully, is that. Um, we are, are testing kind of the black box properties here. We're, we're test, not we're testing behavior, aren't we, rather than than trying to think up test cases ourselves. It's... Yeah, and, and we just ask for give me any test data. Yeah. And it produces magically test data for us. Mm. Magically, of course. And, 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 and lots lots of it. Yes. Couldn't have only got a thousand, but I guess we could say for 10,000, 100,000, a million, whatever. And there's also something called a size. On the config, which allows us to say, uh, I want to get uh, even longer arrays or even longer values. Right. That, that what we get here. Yeah. So, uh, so how should we come? So we, so what we demonstrate is uh, testing simple uh, properties, uh, also using oracles, because we're using this uh, list function to sort of uh, list map to compare with our implementation. I'll just so, put a comment uh, on that. Shall we just make a quick test, so sort of to test the to test the rev function? Yeah, we can do. Yeah. Uh, at least there is a very simple property of the rev function that should always hold, and that is if you reverse a list twice, it should be the original value. That should always be the truth. Let a equal the s pipe that into reverse. Pipe that again to reverse. Yes. There and regardless what the in input is here, right? And this it should always be true. Yeah. Now. 
Which one that then? There we go. That was test passed. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so we, we are building up progress. And I also find uh, we don't have to do it right, right now, but sometimes if you take things like um, uh, the length, we found that the length, when you do this kind of inductive testing, you sometimes need to add base test, test as well, to test a single case to make sure that it works yeah. for uh, some single to sort of lock it in, because otherwise it can just return, you know, length. as long as M plus one is holes, you know, a length can be three or four as long as the, the, the next big is just one more. more yes yeah. yeah so sometimes you need to add these kind of sort of other tests that sort of checks these single case things like like you do with uh, inductive proving right yeah. you you prove the inductive uh what's called in, induction case and then you need to find that it's it's actually true for a single case that's right prove prove for n equals one and then yeah. prove for n equals n plus one Exactly. So, uh, so shall we start looking at the slightly more complicated data structure? Why not? And we've got well, the hang of this now, so let's let's move on to a red battery. Yes, yes, yes. So, what I wanted to start talking, and I'm not sure how far we're going to get, but maybe we get somewhere, uh, is to talk about red black trees. Okay. So, do you want to describe what a red black tree is? Yeah. So a red black tree is a, it's a binary search tree where that is sorted. And because of some certain rules, some properties, uh, a red black tree is almost or is almost balanced. Okay, yeah. Uh, so this sounds very much like um, this data structure that I was playing with um, a while back called a treep. So it's Might like be. a, ba a self-balancing binary tree. Yep. Yeah. It, it, because if you, uh, if you, if you, it's if if you sort of make sure you always make sure these properties always hold, it's uh, it's roughly balanced. Yeah. Uh, and it has pros and cons. People mostly say talk about hash tables, but hash tables also have pros and cons. Has uh, red back trees have different pros and cons. Yeah. Uh, and one one thing people say, well, you know, uh, Red Black Three have worse performance because uh, lookups is order log n, and in a, and in a hash table, it's order one. Yeah. But th that assumes a good hashing function, and that is not always true. Uh, a Red Black Three always uh, a Red Black Three needs a way to compare two values, which is the biggest value. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only thing it needs. Yeah, and that, so, that's never going to change, is it? So. Yeah, and it, and you also get it sorted because the hash uh, hash table is uh, random, by nature yeah. uh, unsorted. Yeah. Uh, and another thing, uh, Microsoft had a had a, not really a security bug, but um, and and a lot of uh, web uh, what's the Sort of web developers, not web framework developers like Ruby, Python had this problem. So one Christmas, and they had this conference where they showed this zero day problem in many things. And what what they did was that uh, if you make a form, a web form, right. each you can put an ID on each element. Yeah. And what what most web framework developer does is that they say, okay, this ID I put this in a hash table. Uh, to s s do an efficient lookup at some point in the future. Right. So what these clever guys were doing is because this hash table was easily reversible, was that they generated a big form of like one million amount or something like that, and then they made sure that each key was different, but had the ha same hash. Right. <laughs> and what happens then is then you don't get order one, you got order n in your lookups because all all, all of these yeah. keys ends up in a single, uh, I don't know if bucket is right. The bucket, bucket, yeah, bucket, yeah. In a hash table. And it gets very poor performance. So Red Black 3, for all, all its faults, doesn't have that problem. Mm. Um, so I think we should define our, uh, start defining our Red Black 3. So a Red Black 3, 
Uh, yeah, let's sort of find it. I, I think maybe I can help you define yeah, you, it. You, you want to carry on? Uh, I'll follow, I'm following you, so. Yep. Yeah. Just give me a sec here. I don't know where you are, though. I'm supposed to be following you, but sometimes I. There we are. I'm with you now. Where are we? There you are. So I'm going to find a new thing that we call called my, my tree or your tree. <laughs> and so what is a tree? Well, in the red, in, in, um, when it comes to red, black tree, uh, you can type red, black tree like this. We need a key value. We need a value. And we have a very easy case, and that is the tree is empty. Yep. Or it's a node. Okay. And a node is, uh, it has a value, and it has two children. Indeed. Because it's binary. tree. And then I say it has, it has a key, and it has a value, and it has a red black tree on the left side. And it has a red black tree on the right hand side, okay. But in addition, so this is a normal balanced tree or could be balanced, but in addition, it also has a color, each node, okay. And the color is either tell you what, can you spell color in the English way yeah, rather than the American way? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. I, I'll spell it in Swedish way. <laughs> I, I don't mind. I don't care. It's a little bit shorter in America, though. O only you would care about that. <laughs> Red or black, yeah. So what we're saying here is uh, uh, that each node has a color, and the empty node is implicitly black. Okay. So that's by definition. Or defin by definition black. So, so why do we have this color thing here going on? That's a that's a very fair question. But there are uh, a few properties that always need to be hold. That always hold, not, needs to hold true. And the first one is the simplest one. And I don't think this is rest restricted necessarily, but it, every implementation has it. The root node is always black. Okay. So, so the root node of a tree will always be black. The second property, or the law, whatever, is uh, no red node has a red child. Three. And, and now uh, I'm not, not sure exactly how to format this here, but all, if, see if you can follow this, all okay. branches, root to leaf has the same number of black nodes. Okay. And it turns out that, uh, wrong button, two plus three gives three depth is at most uh, two times the second logarithm of n plus one. Okay. So that's nice, but why the heck does that do that? Uh, and I don't have a proof, but the way I reason about it is that um, let's assume Let's assume uh, we have no a tree with no red nodes in it. Okay. And then we have uh, 64, uh, 64 elements in it. Each path, or I'm, I might be counting slightly wrong here, or 63, whatever, but each path, right, ha must have the same number of black nodes. That must mean this tree now needs to be perfectly balanced. Because otherwise, uh, uh, it has to be uh, what, a depth of six 
to have 63 or 64 element in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, because otherwise uh, you will break the third rule that each node has to be same number of black, yeah. Same number of black, right? Uh, so then that kind of rule number three kind of gives us that the tree must be balanced. Because if it's not balanced, it, all branches will not have the same number of black nodes. Yes. However, this is too restrictive because this means that we can only have trees that are like in power of two, right? Yeah, yeah or three or whatever right so that doesn't work but the, here's the thing uh, that's why we have the second rule uh, no red node has red child so we yeah. use the second color saying well you know yeah so the rule is this we need to have the same number of black nodes but when we end up in a situation that where we cannot you know if we introduce a black node we, it doesn't work because we have to have this case yeah, we add a red node instead yeah yeah we can, because that will not change. Number of red nodes will not change the number, number of black roads, yeah. But here we have the second row uh, row playing, and they're saying no red node has a red child. Mm -hmm. So that means that the longest path we can have in the tree is the. So if the shortest path is like say five black nodes in a, in a row, the longest possible row uh, row we can have that is not five is ten. Because there is a black node, a red node, a black node, and a red node. Quite, yeah. And so when you add these two together, it means the the rule of three means that the tree must be balanced, perfectly balanced. Mm. But then you introduce a red color to say that well. Sometimes it's not, yeah. We, we can cheat a little bit here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But because the rule is this: no red node has a red child, it can never go too bad the yeah. longest path can only be twice as long as the shortest path so you're limiting how skewed the tree can be yeah exactly right so that is how i reason about that these rules gives this roughly balanced property and we kind of see it here that if it was perfectly balanced it should be probably log n plus one right yeah, log yeah. Two n. but but because the longest path is uh if it, twice as long the worst twice, case is that yeah. Twice as yeah, yeah. So that's how I reason about this tree. And I think this is a very beautiful uh, data structure because of this thing here. Uh, so let's implement uh, some simple methods here. Okay. We have like tree. I'm going to write the most complicated. No, in this case, this is not going to be the most complicated. It's going to get worse than this. <laughs> but I'm going to make the empty tree like this equals empty. Okay, well, that's fairly clear. Yeah. So uh, shall we start by computing the depth of the tree? Or do you want to do the lookup function first? No, depth seems okay. Yeah. Do you want to make a stab at it? Cool. I don't know. Oops, what did I just type? I just typed somewhere. There we are. Yeah, we typed <laughs> yeah. But the depth function is quite, it, it, it's okay to implement. So you take a tree as input, right? Let me path to match this tree. Um, got a match. Oops. And if it's empty, that's easy, right? Depth is zero, I think, wasn't it? Exactly. That's an easy case. But if it if it's a node, we path them. We have to path the match out the different uh, the left to the right to right. Okay. I'm gonna have to do that. Yeah, if you don't me here, yeah. So we oh, ignore God, the of course, yeah. Yeah, we ignore the key. We ignore the value. But we are interested in, in the left tree. Right, and we're interested in the, in the right tree. So, yeah. what we do now is that we compute the left depth, right? Depth, left tree, and then we compute the right depth, right?
<laughs> I just love this. And then, yeah, it's, recursion is uh, nice. Yeah. And I'll go max left depth, right? That is like being back in university again. It is. Those were the days. Plus one. Make it recursive, I think, yeah. I think this is roughly right. I might have done something wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, it just kind of blows my mind. This kind of stuff. It's yeah. You just you're writing the algorithm, and that's so. Uh, if you have to write this in C sharp, you're writing the procedure to do this. But all you just done there is written. You pick up a, a Nuth's book or something and read the algorithm. And you just write the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very mathematical in this in this way, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that that is a useful function for us to have because we want to test this thing at the end, right? This yeah. Tree so we want to test that, but we're not we're not there yet. So I think what we want to implement is the lookup function. Um, so the lookup, if you you can start typing it, it's the lookup function. Let's say this is, should also be recursive, right? So. So it, we take a key, right? We're looking for a key, and we take a tree. Yep. And then we match the tree again. And kind of the same approach. If it's empty, we return none. I would, I would recommend that. And if it's a node. Yeah, we don't care about the color, but now we care about the key and the value. So if you start the parenthesis. Yes, yeah, okay. Does that to get rid of a. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, and you need a left tree. Uh, unfortunately, you need to specify all of them. Yeah, so we need a color as well, don't we? Yeah, but you can underscore it. Yeah. To not. Okay. So, what do we do? Well, if the input key is... Uh, now, now we have a name conflict here. You have the key here and you have the key here. So you have to have different, yeah, yeah. Go my approach. Go your approach, yeah. In fact, we'll, we'll, we'll go Still fully left. your fully your approach here. Yeah. Um, so if the input key is less than the node key, right? If key is less than the key in the node, which is just the K, well, then the answer might be in the left tree. So then we go look up key. In the, in the left. If the else if uh, uh, kind of reverse thing, so if that is bigger than k, then the answer might be in the right tree. Otherwise, we assume we found the answer, right? Because if it's neither bigger or smaller, we've I guess got, it should be the answer, right? The answer, yeah. So we return some value. That looks like a lookup function to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... In order to, but we also need a, a set function where we set the value. Now this is going to get, get lit, uh, in order to, this is going to get a little bit more uh, uh, hairy, but uh, you know, let's uh, start. Uh, in the beginning, it's easy, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's, so you take a key and a value and a tree.
And what do we, and then we match the tree. And if the tree is empty, it's quite simple, right? Then we just return a node. What color should it have? That'll be black. Black, correct. Because that's the rule one. Key value and empty the left and right tree. That was easy. Now, if it's not empty, we, have, we, we do kind of the same thing. We pat the match out um, and the color. The key, the value, yeah. Or if you go single letter here as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's helpfully filling them in for me. Yeah, it's... He's doing it again. Yeah, I hate that. that when, when things are trying to be helpful, that's I don't, yeah. I'm not a fan of that. It was trying to be helpful, but failing then, utterly. Then, then you have to do kind of the same thing as you did before um, with the in the lookup function. So if the key is smaller uh, than K, we try to... Well, then we well, then we insert it in. Uh, then what, what we do is we compute a new left. We insert the, we insert into left tree, and we replace the L here with the new left tree. So if you say new left or something like that, let new left equals I don't know what is the best way. Yeah, something like that, right? Equals set key value. And the left tree. Sounds like a party, new left and new right here. <laughs> and then you return the node. We can and we just keep the color, we don't think about that for, for a moment. So return a node. Oh yeah. An empty MC, yeah. We can't say that, can we? No, we... Uh, you you put in a new left here. New left. And the right. Okay. So, yeah, okay. We, we we've created we've in, we've inserted this in between the existing left. Uh, okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah, so you you made a new one, and then you do the else if k is yeah the the the, the same if as above, but then you do the same thing to right tree. And now I'm gonna find a picture for you while you're writing this thing. Yeah. Okay. Because I think a picture will explain the next step a little bit clearer. Or at least I, I will not be able to express it in words. Uh, and if if it's the same, if then you just replace the value, right? Because if 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 the key is equal, then it's the same. Does that make sense? Um, uh, replace the value. Um, so I'm just going to return a, a new node. Uh, there you go. Now you return a new node. Yes, exactly. And you use, well, it's the same, but you then replace the value with the new yeah. value. Yeah, and uh, I see a slight, uh, yeah, a slight falls here, but it's it's okay. I'm I'm, I'm trying to find a picture, you see, so that's what I'm going for here. Yeah. Oh, stop it. There we go. Ah, it it helps you, right? Oh. Trying to help me a awful lot, yeah. Yeah, my blood is boiling when I do that. So I I see some few mistakes here, so yep. I'm gonna fix them. If you fix them for me, yeah. Because oh, of course, yeah. Uh, we just want to replace 
this thing here. Yeah, we yeah. want to keep everything, but the, replace uh, this. Yeah. yeah. And same thing here, right? And then here, when it's neither bigger, we just to replace the this thing here. Uh, for the future, I'm just going to change this to red, so we don't uh, forget that. So we, whenever we insert a node into a red black tree, we always insert a red node. Right. That's what we do. But it's not happy about my if statement here. Okay. What does it say? Okay. So um, incomplete, unconditional, conditional, expected if expression then. So we missed yeah, the then yeah. option. Uh, yeah. You, you lack a, an if. Uh, yeah. I've got it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're keeping the um, maintaining the um, reputation for not being able to type. Yeah, well, that's, you have a reputation to sort of you know. I do, yeah. It's very important keeping up with appearances. So now, so in theory, this thing I would say works. The problem with this thing here is that it it's uh, one it it will break the rule because there will only be red in this tree there will only be red nodes so i've, got, I've still got a problem with these sets so we set key value tree well, uh, what does it say what so is the problem uh, the value is not a function and cannot be applied which because so, it's, it's not recursive that's why oh yeah yeah, yeah. That's, there that's the reason. yeah there we are so this this will work in principle, but it will break all the rules we said before, and it will create a tree that is probably not balanced yeah. or might, you know, just balanced by luck. So what what we need here is a, what we what we're going to add here is a function that will rebalance the tree okay. to make sure that it's stay stay balanced. And this is where I wanted to show you a picture. How do we? How can I share this with you the easiest way? Pardon me. Uh, you can share it into um, the chat in uh, Teams. Hmm, that's a good idea. Let me let me find. Uh, that is probably the best idea. So I'm gonna copy paste some images and then you can maybe show them on stream. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, can do. Uh, do, 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 do. Save uh, from uh, four four cases. So I sh obviously we should have done this before the stream started, but you know. <laughs> well, there's a lot to think about before the stream. I just remind you that this stream is free. Uh, I'm not a pro I'm not a professional presenter, so this this is the quality you pay for. To transform to this. So I'm, I'm just, um, I got these pictures now. I'm okay. going to upload a, a Discord. Oh, into Discord, okay. Yeah. Uh, was, if I just can find them, it's uh, complicated. So uh, for, yes, there we have them. So if you paste them into the general channel, we should see them then. Yep, he's coming. There, there we are. So here is a, first an image uh, to describe how the rebalancing algorithm will work. OK. So it's obvious now, right? When you see this. <laughs> okay. Now, what what this what this uh, says to us is that our uh, assuming that the tree is valid, if we, if we are inserting a red node, there mm -hmm. are four different conf conflicts that can ap uh, can appear. Yeah. And that is if. Uh, I can have a point on the screen, but in the top left corner, uh, we have inserted a red node. 
left off uh, left node to Z. Yeah, that's there. That is a, that is one conflict. Then below it, we have inserted a red node on the right side. Of, a, of another red node, yes. Yeah, and on on the other one is is that thing, and the 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 letters here are picked in such a way. Uh, so then when I show you the next slide, but the, the, the idea is this. In order to fix this thing here, we're going to reorganize these nodes in such a way so that we remove this conflict, but we don't break the, uh, the rule of introduce. We cannot introduce more black nodes because then we can break the global rule of each path should have the same number of black nodes. Yeah. So the way we're going to reorder these nodes is a way that we're going to fix so that each branch contains the same number of black nodes, but we remove these two red node conflicts. Mm -hmm. And that's the magic. So all of these four cases will be reorganized into the next picture. Okay. Which I also shared in the Slack. It's a nicely balanced tree. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for it to appear perhaps on here. Yeah. Yeah, so now I see it on the screen. So what the heck happened here? Well, uh, we, we are changing the structure so that now the structure will look like this. Uh, so the Y node is put on top and it will become red. And X and Z node will become black. Black, yeah. So if you remember, it's a little bit hard if you don't see it at the same time, but in all these other cases, there was a single black node on top. So now we, yeah. now we are forking the branches. So we're putting two black nodes, but we're just putting one black node in each branch. Yeah. So we're not, we are not increased, we are not changing the number of black nodes per branch, because if you go in left or right, there's still the, still the same, same number of yeah. nodes. Just eliminating the, the duplicate reds. Yeah. So, so this is a very ingenious transform. The reason for these letters, like X, Y, and Z, is that, is that um, if we just make sure that the, the ABC nodes and these kind of things are in this order, it will make sure that the tree is still uh, um, is still put uh, um, um, that these conditions left and right will hold. So if you just examine the top left corner, in order to for X, Y, and Z to be ordered in that way, uh, Z has to be bigger than Y. Y has to be bigger than X. Yes. So when we are reorganizing this tree here, we have to put the Y in the middle uh, because Y is between X and Z. Yes. And we have to maintain the order of A, B, and C and D in that way. Yep. Now, for different cases, X, Y, and Z are put into different positions here in yep. this tree. Um, so this, this thing will be maintained. But... So, but th th that is the basic, what will happen here, is that we will have four cases that are then mapped into this case. And we're going to call this function rebalance. And we, we will call this rebalance function at, uh, uh, at, at um, uh, when we are um, at each stage here. So this rebalance function is not super complicated to implement, but it's a little bit tedious. So I'm just going to share that with you. Uh, so we don't have to. So we don't have to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Okay. I, I hopefully I haven't made mistakes by writing this thing, but <laughs> that's entirely possible. But we will do everything using path matching. So I will just put the rebalance function here. Okay. And you see, oh, oof, shame, shamefully, I have used the American spelling of color. But I think I can fix it very quickly. You fix this in YouTube, right? So we don't see it. <laughs> you, know, you won't see any of this in YouTube at all, no. Yeah. Color. Dot. Boy, those are many places. Um, place. Color. Dot. With nothing. There we go. So, what does rebalance do? Rebalance do what that picture was doing. Oops, all right. I'm just going to indent it another level because you use a different indention than I do. Yeah. 
I'm just going to do that. No, that was bad. Ah, okay. No. It's just that level. That, that's it, yeah. So what the heck is happening here? Okay. Well, it, 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 it is happening, the thing we saw in this PowerPoint presentation. It, it does a pattern match. So check it. Is, is the top node black? Black, yeah. Yeah. Does it have a left node that is red? Yes. Does it have a left node of that left node that is red? Yes. Then yeah. we have a conflict between these two things. Yeah, so that's the, that's the case that we saw probably the top left. Top. I can't remember which one it was, but that's yeah. Great. So then we have a conflict. And then the letters here are cleverly chosen to match the picture. Uh, so this is said, said, y, x, and so on and so mm. forth. And then we have the thing. OK, let's look here now. So let's say we have a top black node. And then we have a red node. But now we have the conflict in the right tree of that red node. And so on, so on and so forth. By picking the letters in this way and so forth, we can then say, OK, let's then construct a new node that is red, root node, and has two black nodes as a shy yeah. children. Yeah. And that should then be a valid, given we have a conflict that will now remove the conflict and uh, by introducing these two black nodes. Now, it is in the top node here will be red. So it's possible that this introduces a new conflict into the tree. Yes, sir. But that's why we're going to apply rebalance uh, on each level, so that uh, so it it will this so this invariant will hold. So okay. and this 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 is uh, so okay. How the heck do we apply rebalance? Well, we just do this. Like that. So whenever we construct a new node, rebalance might, the tree. Yeah, yeah, we might have a new conflict here because this might be red and this might be red. We we might need to rebalance it or something like that. Cunning, very cunning. Uh, now there is a, just a small problem with this code here, and that is we have the first rule, and that is that all top nodes should be, be black. black. Yeah. So I would as uh, I would say we call this set imp, something like that. And then we implement a new set function that just recolors the, the root node. I'm just going to write it for you. Yep. Key value tree. So this is a little bit, you know, more uh, challenging. But the the idea of the pictures is just what we did here, and hopefully we didn't mess up too much. If it's empty, we return empty. Yeah. If it contains, if it's a node, then we just say we don't care about the color because the rules is this. It should always be black. black yeah. E value left. Right. Now I believe we have. Um, now I believe we have written. Cannot win. What we should do now, before we write the test cases, because we are now. But is this understandable? Yeah. What we did here? Yeah. So obviously this this is going to take a bit of thinking about this rebalance. Yeah. But yeah, the way you've written written it, you just sit. I mean, if you, if this were, if I had. Um, if I had code rush working in F sharp, I'd just paste those pictures in because it makes it easy then to, to see which all these four cases. And all and, and the cunning thing here is they all do you you match to the same the same yep. reorder here. Yep. Just because now, you've if, put the, the um the uh, uh, X sorry, the uh, X, Y, Z in the in, in the right order in the in the yeah. matches. So there. I think this is very hard to understand, but if you have the picture ahead of you and compare the uh, the the different uh, x y and z with a b and c d I think it's easy to understand. Yeah, the, the puddings well, in chat. Welcome the pudding. Yeah, Hello, that. good to see you. Thank you for dropping by. So now, if you do this in a language that doesn't support pattern matching like this, uh, it it would be 
I, I try to do this in uh, C sharp. No, no flame on C sharp, but at least uh, that, when I did it, C sharp didn't have path matching. Mm. It was very difficult to get right because what's nice about here is that you are. It was hard to keep track of should I go left or should I go right in the tree. Yeah. Here it's uh, it's uh, I, it's that the pattern matching doesn't allow you to look at the wrong subtree. So when I when I look at the left left tree, I need to pattern match for left left tree, and then I can by mistake go left right when I construct a tree. Yeah, yeah. So I found that this kind of code here was really powerful for creating uh, data structures like this. Yeah, I think what 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 we're doing here is really showcasing the strengths of F sharp. Yeah, I, I think so too. Before we do our test cases, because we're really ramping up to our test cases now, I think we should make a function that uh, from a list creates a tree. Okay. Uh, so let's call it uh, from list, perhaps. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, from list is probably good. Or off list, I think it's called. And we take a list as an input. Of list. Yeah, off list. I think that is the naming standard used in. So we can start by just looking at map dot off list because I think map dot off list exists. The built-in function. So. Yes. So if you look at the type signature here, what does this take? So it takes a. It takes a list of key keys and values, mm. and then it uh, it gives back a map of key and value, basically. So that's how we want our signature to look as well. We want to have a list of key values, and then we're going to produce a, a red black tree of key values. Okay. Uh, so, and we can use, do this using the fold function, because we're folding our tree, and mm. we fold over the map. Uh, of the list, sorry, to create a tree. So, uh, since it's getting late, I can write it. Yeah. Uh, my head is starting to hurt a little bit here, so uh, no, it doesn't hurt, but uh, I'm getting a little bit tired as well. So. Yes, absolutely. So, so we make a folder function, yeah. the state, send a tree, and oops, and we get a key and a value in as an e argument and what we do now is we go set key value in the state which is the tree okay and then we say we fold with this thing here and we send in an empty key that, that's our so, initial value yeah and i don't is the signature correct of the list function of list function it doesn't I don't really see it here. Okay, so it it wants to take a, a function which takes state and a value to a state, uh, and it takes some state. Yeah. And it takes what a list. Was the off list function in that we just created on line 156. Oh, off list. Okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, looks okay. Yeah, but then we then we can start writing some tests, right? Okay, let's write some tests. So let's uh, create these property tests because now we have uh, we have a bunch of functions and we want to make sure that these uh, this tree has this uh, behavior that we're looking for. So let's make a module test or whatever. Yeah, we we can copy paste the te module test appearance and then remove some stuff. Yeah. So what we'll do. Um, what we'll do is um, copy that. That tree. I think you need to unindent this one level to make it work. Yeah. If 
Back module back. should be a small m. And uh, there we are. And we'll scroll down. We need the run method as well, right? Yeah. Um, so, so what should I, uh, I have a suggestion for our first test. Okay. Uh, and that is given, now, we cannot ask for tree here, not right out of the box, because the, the reason it worked for immutable stack was that immutable stack had no invalid values. But a tree, if you ask for a random tree, yeah. uh, it doesn't know about that. Mm -hmm. So we can't ask for tree. But what we what we can ask for is a list of key value key values, and then we create a tree from that key value list. So yeah, you replace this thing, and then you say uh, ask for key values. Uh, not like that. Uh, I meant uh, I meant um, I meant a variable like key values. And that is a list of uh, I would suggest int star int. So so we just ask for uh, key values here. And then we can construct. We can using our fu function called, called off list. We can construct the. We can construct a. We can construct a tree from this. Yeah, and you assign this to a tree. Now. Okay. And what I then will ask for is a key and a value to. Two integers as well. So you add the key and value parameter. So we have key values, but add in addition. Yeah, I, I show you what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's it's simpler than. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. So I'm, I'm just saying I also want a key, and I want a value. Okay. So, so what I wanted. Uh, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, we can write something smart here. Yeah, oh yeah, you, so my bad. I don't know what it should do, but there we are. Yeah, we let we, we you you get it after we. Yeah. So, we have a tree, but what I want to do now is create an updated tree where we take the tree and I I set the key and the value in the tree. Okay, yeah. And then when I do a lookup here. Of this tree, this key, we expect that to be equal to some value, right? Yeah. So we take a list of key values, arbitrary list, whatever. We construct from that a tree. And then, in addition, what we're doing is that we are setting a specific key and value of the tree into the tree. And then we and then we look look up the value, and now that value should be the it it, it the tree should contain this value. Should contain that value, yes. For the key. So if you've done this correctly, this should work. So I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna go open. What is it? My tree, right? Open. Uh, yeah, you have tree test run. Yeah. Does this compile and run, or what kind of error do we get? Oh, oh yeah, and uh, I see I made a bug here. Okay, <laughs> then. Yeah, very obvious bug. Okay. It builds okay. Yeah, that's always a start. Uh, okay, should we run it? I have no idea if this is going to work, by the way. So part of the excitement, it has worked. I'm waiting for it to pop up here. Yeah, I'm making it bigger as well. There we go. 
So it runs 1,000 tests, and all of them succeeded. Now, uh, that's good, right? But Pretty one good. Of the, the one, one, one of the things that's important to us is that the tree is roughly balanced. Really balanced, yeah. yeah. So we should check that property as well, that when we given an arbitrary tree, the depth should be at most uh, this formula. Because uh, now we just proven that the, the tree, uh, oh, we're not proven, but we, we, we made it plausible that yeah, what, if we have a tree and then we insert a key value into it, it seems to contain it. But it can be very, very unbalanced. Ah, I see what it, yeah. It's null. I was thinking, oh, it's null, but that is uh, trying to help you as usual. Yes, I know. It's just helping. Yeah. It's uh, not. It's not helping at all. I don't know why it's doing that all of a sudden. It seems to be get it's got over the top on trying to uh, be helpful. My 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 work computer. It's for some reason starting to input random periods. Oh really? Dots, and it's just oh, such a waste of time. No, you have to ask for key values. You cannot ask for. Oh, I can't. Value. I can't ask for one. Yeah. The, what we could do is we could create a generator for key uh, tree value, but it's uh, it's too complicated to do in the remaining time. Yeah. So, um, um, oh, it's not that complicated, but it's just it's. We haven't got a lot of time. Yeah. We don't, yeah. It's getting we don't, light. Need, a, we don't <laughs> need a key value here. To, uh, so you can just remove the two first parameters. Yeah. And then you construct a tree. Okay, there's our tree. Yep. Yeah. And the then depth. you say, then you sh check the depth of the tree, compute the depth. And then we make sure that the depth is less. Yeah, yeah. So expected. Yeah. It's not really expected, is it? But let's just uh, say this is this is a little bit different. So it's uh, yeah, so that is less than less than or equal to. Um, is, it, is it less than or less than or equal to? I uh, less than equal. I think yeah. it's correct. Two times. Log two. That doesn't exist, but we have to implement it. Okay. That's okay. Uh, key values, uh, uh, the length of key values, plus one. Should I help out? Yeah, please, yeah. Like so, right? Okay, that's good. But then we, we need, need a log, log two, don't we? Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna type it from memory, so uh, you know you know this stuff as well. So help me if I'm doing wrong. Okay. Uh, but I believe this is the way to compute it. Right? Yeah, looks good. And I think it's gonna complain about this not being floats, so we need to convert this to floats. Float, float, float. Something like that. Okay, yes, happy now. Let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Would you look at that? I'm waiting for it to yeah, appear. Yeah, it'll appear in a second. So, so that is, I mean, that is promising, isn't it, right? It's pretty promising, yeah. Yeah, so 
but let's try to change so we change 2.0 to 1.3 or 1.2 or something like that because that should fail then 1.3 should we say yeah i'm not sure i don't know yeah. we'll, we'll give it a go <laughs> our, yeah, let's see what happens our test data may uh the yeah, has failed in that case i'm waiting for it to the screen to appear yeah so it's done 14 shrinks on that it shrunk down to this basic yeah. test so, case here. So, so so it says well it it hasn't found a failing test when the for smaller and that makes sense because then it's not but when the, it grows larger yeah uh, the, the difference grows bigger so after 864 tests it found a counter proof to our uh, to our example now we can make it to go deeper quicker like because now it doesn't go that deep that quick yeah but it it found a counter proof here so uh, um so 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 we so we know now that the lookup function seems to work and we uh, we also know that uh, it seems to be roughly balanced so that that is pretty good news i think yeah absolutely so to sort of wrap this thing up, uh, should we also test that uh, uh, the red and the black property holds? Okay. Uh, because then we are testing, because what I think is nice here is that we are then testing uh, rule two and rule three, which are very important to us. And they should never break. And then, I, then I will break the test. Then I will. Uh, I also have a. I also have a way to break our tree that I'm going to show before we quit today. So. So I have prepared this function. So I share. Is that okay? I share that with you. Yeah. So it's okay. Or do you want to make a stab? So I'm just reading what um, what Surly Devs was put. So <laughs> very funny, Surly Dev. Sorry, right, carry on. End of course. Now the cursor. No. It doesn't really work for me now. Oops. Oh, why? Does it work for you? Interesting. Does it work for you? Or? Yeah, it's working for me now. Maybe I press some button and buttons, and now with that, that's not. Uh, I need to restart uh, VS Code. Okay. Your browser is currently not supporting the preview, but we'll be adding support soon. But it was working. <laughs> now I'm a little bit sad here. Let's see if it tries to reconnect here. Yeah, so uh, you notice I am using this. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I'm not seeing the live code. I'm seeing something else. Oh. Oh, right. No, uh, no, I think I might be. No, it looks very weird. Hmm. Uh, you continue. I think you, you're on the right track. I'm gonna. I'm going to try to reconnect to this thing. Yeah. Do we want of list rather than of array here? Ah, yeah, yeah. So of list is the right one. Yeah. You back in. So you do. You get the point how this thing works, right? Yeah. So the, the idea is this that. We create from we create a tree from an input, and that we check 
then we, then we check that we find no conflict. So there should never be a case where we have a red, red node and a red, yeah. in the left, in the top and right. And then we fail. But if we don't find a conflict, we go down and check the left and right tree. Yeah. Recursively go and check the rest of it, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's just how this thing works. It, it's looking for the red conflicts. And if, we, and if we've done our implementation correctly, we should, we should see red conflicts. No. Okay. Should we give that a go? Yeah. Let's see if we make sure we build first. Okay, let's run it. Look at that. It's passed. Yeah, so we are we are we have been implementing our uh our algorithms very well. But so I think you know it's hard to get across this, but I think this is pretty cool. We are actually testing uh we are we're testing that the that the property of red of of redback trees always hold regardless of the input. Mm. And this generates quite nasty inputs as well. But so one final thing before we kind of wrap up perhaps, because we might be reaching a time where it's good to wrap up. Yeah. I want to show you a nice trick with this again. So can I can I write some code? Yep, yep. See you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce something which I called um, yeah, now it jumps around like mad. Uh, I'm following just, you. So where are you? Let me just. Uh, it might work now. I don't know. Where am I? Here we have there it. you are. Yeah. So I'm going to introduce a type which is called the key. Okay. And I'm going to say int of int. This is a cool trick, by the way. Uh, I would say string of string. Okay. And instead of here, I'm not sure this demo will turn out as good as I'm hoping, but instead I'm going to use this key, oh, okay, which is yeah. saying, because we want to test that it also works for keys that are more complex than just integer values. Yes. So let's try to see if this compiles and runs. Because now I'm just saying, um, and maybe you should, um, what I will do here is I will print the key. OK. So if you run this, we should see a lot of key values. And if you're lucky, we will see int and string key values. Mixed in, OK. Let's run. I'm waiting for a screen to appear. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some really nasty um, keys in there. Look at that one. Yeah. But all the tests did succeed, I believe. All the tests passed, yeah. Yeah, so we can see now uh, the tree handles more. So this is a pretty cool thing, I think, that because uh, FS check detects that you take either an int or a string, well, let's generate an int or a string value. Pretty now, beautiful. I'm not sure this is going to work out as I hope, but I'm going to remove this print here, and I'm going to say, let's try with a float, and floating points. OK. Let's see how that work, thing works out. And if you run this test, what happens? Interesting. So we've hit a, an exception. It doesn't tell us what the exception is. So an exception on this key. Interesting. A user handled system exception and it's it's blank. What did it say? It doesn't say anything. It says system dot exception. Uh, is it the the same old? So uh, this was not the intention, by the way. <laughs> uh, this was not what I was hoping for. So let's be a little bit more explicit. I'm going to go with my, you never know if there are some special meanings to these things as well. Yeah. OK. So yeah. Give that a go. Yeah, let's try to give it a go. Yes, he doesn't like that. Since you've added float in there, we're getting this exception. Mm -hmm. And we don't see what exception. No, it doesn't tell you what. It just says system.exception. There's no, there's no uh, details about what the exception is. View details? No? Copy details? 
what what happens if you click view details or copy details? What happens? Oh, here we go. If you go copy details and you paste that into some editor. No, yeah, we see there is actually the the it's the text is black. Is it? Yeah. Um. Uh, inner exception, null exception. List dictionary. It doesn't, it doesn't give any information really. So it was uh, the exception was thrown at um, f sharp dot core dot language primitives dot hash compare dot generic yeah, that's not, compare. Yeah, that's, that's not really uplifting. Mm. Um, uh, okay, well, uh, let's do it this way instead. Like so. Does it compile and work now? I just changed it to float. Okay. This might be a bug in F sharp. It could be. It has worked for me before, though. So it, it works that way. There you go. So it's worked out if you uh, with a float there, yeah. Yeah, but here, here I wanted to see to fail, but I think the yeah, yeah I'm gonna implement another test case here. Okay. Uh, because. I want to show you something. So I'm going to say uh, okay, all distinct values keys. So what I'm going to do now is something slightly different. Uh, I want to check that all, all these values in this key value list exist in the tree that we create. But, he, but here's the thing, uh, because uh, there might be duplicate keys. Okay, yeah. I'm going to remove the duplicate keys in, before we do it. Okay. Uh, and so how do we do that? Yeah, so I'm going to do this. Did, we, did I, I didn't remove? No, I didn't. Let KVs. Equal key values. Uh, how do you do this again? At least uh, distinct file first, perhaps. Okay. I need to look at some code I've written before, uh, which I think was very clever, but I can't come up come up with it. Right on the spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's hard. It's, it's not oh, it's not super clever, it's, but it's a little bit more than uh, I want to because I just want to show an example. I hope I have an example. So what this thing does here, right, is first we remove and go distinct by to remove all the uh, keys that are duplicated because. I mean, the, the the tree will work properly anyway, but uh, the, this, but when we looking, it will be harder for us to sort of find if if the if it was a duplicate key. So I'm just removing all duplicates. Okay. Yeah. We've got a T over space. here that's um, floating around. It that T supposed to be. Uh, 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 yeah. What is that supposed to? Be? Probably a tree, right? Tree. Yeah. So and then uh, ignore we ignore this for now. Then I'm going to compute for each unique key. Can I find the value in the tree, and is that equal to the value I'm expecting it to be? Right. Yeah. So this would be true or false. So if the if the if the value exists in the tree with the right value, this will be true. Yeah. So we expect that this should be an array or a list of just true values. If that makes sense, it does. Because yeah. If they're false, so what I do here to make it, I don't know this. You is make a, a list of uh, of trues, yes, yeah. Right. yeah. And then I compare that this e, this is equal. I could probably gone. I don't know. It's probably not the smartest thing to do. No, but reasonable. Yeah, that's what I that's what I did at least. So let's see if uh, that test works. Maybe I messed up. 
Well, it compiles, so that's a good. That's a yeah, first that's step. The, that was a good start. You know what to say about function programming? If it compiles, it works. It should work, yes. Yeah, that's a lie, but uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. There we go. Waiting to see. Should contain all distinct keys. Okay, past 100, 1,000 tests. Yeah. So let's see if I. Uh, what happens if I'm kind of hoping that something will happen now? So I'm changing this to float. Okay. And we see if it goes bananas. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Or um, we have to do it some other time. Yeah. So that yeah. So it's got an infinity in there. Mm. And a an, and a nan. No, it's got a nan. Yeah. Right. Because it found it found a. So what it did now was that it found a counter proof. It found that if it had a list of infinity, zero and none, we have a problem. Yeah. But then it shrunk it down to zero. To yeah. Infinity, and it turns out that it's not the number is the problem. Yeah. So uh, so here's the trick question, or not the trick question, but but why is not the number a problem? Hmm. What's wrong? What's, why is this being silly? And the the answer is uh, the answer is uh, I'm just you're not going to put you on a sort of you know spot. But if you look at the lookup function, for example. Oh, the lookup function. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so are you looking at the lookup function? I am. Yeah. Yeah. So. So if the key is less than yeah, key, we look up the left. If it's bigger than, then we look up the right. But if it's not neither less than or e or it's bigger, so it's some v. Yeah. Assume then the assumption is that it's equal. Yeah. That is true for each value except not the number. Yeah. Which is not because equal to anything. If you do less than comparison with any number. So if if key is not a number or k is not a number, it will always end up. In the sum we, yeah, so it will always be false, yeah. And likewise, when we're doing the insert, we're doing the same comparison. And this is this is something that is true for any, I think, uh, uh, red back tree imputation because it relies on this idea that if it's not less than or it's not bigger than, it's equal, yeah. And that is not true for floating points. Interesting. So I interesting. Show you, but I think I don't know if this is an F sharp bug or whatever. But I want to show you this thing that this is quite nice because you can create these key types that are floats or strings or integers, and you can test multiple cases like this with very little code. Mm, yeah. But obviously we run into a problem here. But so so when I first implemented the Redback tree, this was impressive to me because I didn't think about this not a number problem. Yeah. And and the FS check has, has brought it up, yeah. Yeah, it 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 gives us these nasty values, and then it and then I, my my probably best testing, because if I done normal unit testing here as well, yeah, you'd never have thought of it, would you? Testing with that value. Mm. But now we have. So what I felt when I ran into this thing is like, I had if maybe two more tests, but we've written one, two, three, four tests here, mm. and I'm. And I'm thinking that it's probably this Redback tree probably works pretty good now. Yeah. We have written a test that checks that it's roughly balanced. We have written a test that makes sure that if we if we, we can find all the unique keys in it, we have written a test that if we take any tree and add a key to it, we can find it again. And and we're checking the red prop the rule number two. We can also implement rule number three. But if you do that as well, so with all with we kind of five tests. In my head, we have a pretty good test coverage. Yeah. So in terms of this, this not a number. Then how how is that resolved in this lookup? What do you mean? So how, you, we found we found a failing test there. Yeah. Um, is there any way of kind of coping with that? Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, you want to fix it in lookup function. Well, um, I, I guess it's like. It, the value is it's non, I suppose, isn't it? But I was wondering if there's a if there's a way of trying to because it's like an error situation, I suppose, isn't it? 
Yeah, maybe we could. Yeah, it's it's it kind of breaks the contract, which this yeah, the, yeah. So, so maybe we could add it. I'm I'm in the lookup function by the way. Maybe we could add if key is equal to k and else. We can try this. Play with yeah. something bad happen like that, mm. and then also add it uh, if key equals v then this else play with something bad happened. But it it, it is a little bit tricky to fix this thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's try this and see what happens. Unexpected. Um, well, no, but com com comparison with not the numbers, they, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what see what happens with that. Yeah, it doesn't even compile. And uh, uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, by the way, uh, oh, uh, this is this is a mistake by us here. Oh, newbies. I haven't thinking about this. Something is elif. I'm not sure if there's a difference to be honest. What what is it? What is it complaining about? I don't see the red lines. Um, my oh, it's not red lines. It just didn't compile that time. But it's yeah. It's it's throwing a type mismatch. Expecting list key. Uh, which which line? So it's here. Yeah, uh, you, you have to find the line for me. Uh, Hundred and seventy-six. Did we break something by doing this? I think we must have broke something. Yeah. I think I think must have. I'm not sure what we've done here. Um, so of list is is complaining about of list. Yeah, now it says, oh, yeah, 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 it's quite obvious. There you go. It's happy now. Yeah. I was, did the wrong comparison. Yeah, so now it's got, to, we've hit the um, something bad happened. Yeah, but at least then we, we, we capture it, yeah. So that's an, that's an improvement, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, uh, so, and, th and then you realize, okay, this is not something that is supported by this uh, tree structure. Don't put in these values. Yeah. At least it doesn't go, uh, it doesn't pretend. And then we say, well, then we might say that, well, maybe it doesn't work so well for floating point numbers. And we say, we change back to integer. Does it work if you run it with this? Indeed it does. Yeah. So. Two words with strings and integers. I mean, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Key, keys which are floating points sounds a bit weird, anyway, doesn't it? Really? It's always difficult. But that, mm -hmm. what I think is cool here is that it finds a specific value, which is not a number, which most developers, including myself, doesn't always think about. No, I wouldn't have never thought of it. No. Infinity is not a problem because infinity has a very strict sort of you know rules uh, around it, but not a number is complicated. Mm. Because infinity is like, is infinity equals to infinity? I think that's the answer. Is that yes? I don't, I don't remember, but infinity, infinity works. Infinity is hard. <laughs> yeah. Infinity is hard, but not a number is even harder. Yeah, yeah absolutely, because it's not a number, and you can't do any numerical operations with it, obviously. Yeah. So we started uh, because I'm, I think we might be, we have, in my head, we kind of reaching an, a good point to cut off. I think so. Yeah. So I just want to recap what I think we accomplished. We started with creating a very simple uh, linked list in F sharp, uh, which is immutable. And we wrote some test cases on, on top of that. Now, this is not a performant linked list. I just must mention that, but it, it, it is small, right? And then we implemented the red black tree and implemented and, check, and checking using FA check, checking for properties in the red black tree. And we were able to sort of see that uh, the tree is roughly balanced and it supports uh, set operation and lookup operations and it doesn't work for floating points. Yeah. And I think, I think, 
with rather small test coverage, we can feel pretty confident that it actually is quite okay. Yeah, and it's amazing. That you, not only do we get just kind of four or five tests, but when the, the kind of, say, as you say, the data complexity that FS Check is throwing at it is not something we'd ever do. You yeah. wouldn't sit down and put all those non printing characters in there, would you, sir? And, and I used FS Check to check uh, uh, JSON parts I wrote. Oh, yes. Uh, so then I, uh, what I did was I generated a JSON document, and then I, uh, so it's actually quite simple. I generated a JSON document, kind of. Uh, no, not what I do. I don't generate a string because that's complicated. But I generate a model of the JSON document. Yeah. And then I then I write this model to a string. And then I parse the string, and that should be the identity operation. Yeah. And just that very simple, uh, create a random document, write a string, read from string, should be identical. That covers a lot of bugs. It does, that's, yes. It's one, that's one test case, yeah. and it's super simple to write. Mm. Uh, I also made it more complicated. Uh, you can also make, you can also generate list of actions to do. So one thing, I, if you want to test a, a, like an immutable queue or a mute, uh, no, what an immutable heap. What you do with a heap is you push a value and you get the value, and it has certain things. Yeah. yeah. So in order to make that work, what uh, because you. With mutability, it's getting more tricky. But what I did then was I then I generated a list of actions, push a value, pop a value, and I took an array and I was replaying these actions on top of over and over again, yeah, of on top of it. And I actually found several bugs in oh, this right. heap implementation because of that, because it's very tricky to get this index plus one. But my unit tests I've written at the time didn't find any bugs at all. But the, the thing that found the bugs were FS check with properly based testing. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't come up with these sequences. Like if I push, 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 and then pop, 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 and then I push again, then it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. I've also quite quite like this like this using these oracle uh, functions. That was that's a really good idea. Uh, that's a cheat, but it's it's a way to reuse other people's effort. Well, yeah. So they've spent an awful lot of time getting their implementation correct, as you say. So yeah. just just leverage that. Yeah. So so. So why should we implement a new stack? That's no use. But I have implemented uh, push streams. It's a favorite thing of mine. Yes. Uh, I talked about that before. And, and with push streams, you implement filter, you implement map, you implement all these kind of functions, right? And I want to make sure that they work properly. Yeah. So what I do then is I just I test them against a list of map. They should have the same, same properties. Map, yeah. yeah. Same properties. Mm. And then it generates like 1,000 test cases. And I'm feeling, yeah, it, it works for every one of these. It probably works. And then I have just one test case per, per functions, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then what I do also later on is I make a little bit more, you know, putting many things together. But my test for map, in my case, is like what you have on screen. Yeah. I run the list map, and I run my map. And it should return It'll the same. the same, yeah. And that's a very effective way of <laughs> implementing test cases. You can do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, and so to wrap, and also, property based testing has, a, like many function concepts, has a difficult name. You, people, you get confused by the name, at least I do. But it's basically it's just saying when you ask, for, when you type VS colon list int, randomize a list for me. Just do it. Yeah. And there's, and no, no, there's no coding involved. It just does it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you make sure that. Whatever list you get, your function should return true if it's correct and false if it's incorrect. Mm. And then FS check looks, tries to find a counter proof. And when it finds a counter proof, it tries to simplify it. And, and that's the key, isn't it? Because if it throws out the most complicated version, as you say, that's going to be really kind of difficult for you to yeah. comprehend. But if it shrinks it down to the simplest possible failing case. And if, if you remember our case when we used floating point numbers with our list, mm. it's an infinite there, and it was not a number. And, you know, if I would guess, if I didn't know anything about floating point, I might, uh, which one is the problem? Yeah. No. And you'd, so, be, you'd be attracted naturally towards infinity in many yeah. ways, wouldn't you? I think so too. Mm. And then you find infinity is not a problem. So you spend time looking at the wrong... You know, thing. the shrinking is 
very good to sort of eliminate you wasting time of irrelevant stuff. Mm. Okay, then, thank you very much for that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just push all this up to uh, GitHub. So uh, if anyone's interested in having a look at code and what we've done today, it's all up on GitHub. I'll just post my GitHub into chat. Everything on there is covered by the MIT license. So um, it's kind of do whatever you want with it. Um, I've, got no, I've got no trouble about if you want to just use the code yourself or expand on it. If you would like to kind of submit PRs or whatever, that's fine. Or uh, issues, just do so. Um, Love to, to hear from you if you do. Um, yes, yeah, so that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Morton. So that's uh, that's up on GitHub. This video will be on YouTube uh, tomorrow. Uh, so the YouTube link is on in chat now. Um, we've had Discord things, messages, I think, throughout the stream. So do pop over into my Discord if you'd like to. And um, it's now what? We've been going just over three hours, Morton. So that's, uh, that's pretty good going. I think that's a stream. Yeah, that's, that's a stream. That's a wrap. So thank you so much, um, and um, well, we need we need to think about what we're going to do next. But uh, we'll, we'll take that off stream and have, have a thought about because um, I know that you've got some very interesting kind of projects going on, uh, yeah. particularly interested in your formlets. But as you say, it might be there might be a bit of a kind of learning curve for everyone involved to follow that. I, so. you know, it's uh, I mean, you could do it in a way that you you demonstrate the benefit. And first, mm. and then look into the, the implementation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay then. So I think we'll go and find someone to uh, to raid if there's anyone around. Let's go and have a look. Developers Garage is a guy I like. I don't know if he's on anymore. Is he still streaming? We'll have a check because last time we did a raid, I raided Gareth. At the exact moment, yeah, he raided me, which is quite amusing. But he's a host for uh, VS Code. Yeah, right. Last okay. time we did a raid, oh. I raided Gareth. I'm going to move this. At the exact yeah, moment, he raided <laughs> me, which is quite amusing. But he's a host for uh, VS Code. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's go and see who's around. There's Lana. Let's go and let's go. Uh, Adron Hall. I wonder if he, I wonder if he's he's got no viewers. So let's go and raid him, Adron. Okay. okay so um, during these troubled times, um, I'm still only streaming um, once a week at the moment. Um, hopefully, at some point, we'll get to be more frequent uh, streams. But the next stream will be uh, next Monday. So thank you ever so much for those who joined me. Thanks super uh, super much for um, the raid from uh, Robert Tables and those who stayed on after that. And special thanks to uh, to Morton for what a fantastic stream. So good night, everyone, and we'll see you again next Monday. Take care. Keep safe. Bye. Take care. Keep safe. Yep, I think we've raided, so that's good. Yeah, that means happy. Starting in a few minutes. Oh, yeah. Nice flash game. Yeah, but uh, I hope uh, I hope you found it interesting. Yeah, it was very good. Thank you so much. I do it do and do our, our collaborations, and they always always stretch stretch me. And I, I like I like having to think, and uh, I don't always get it right. But um, I, I always no, take a lot nice. away from the streams that we do together. So thanks so much for that. Uh, now I see you on the stream again. <laughs> okay. Right, stop the stream.